Do you want to learn how to create an amazing website yourself without spending too much time? Well, then you're at the right address. My name is Ferdy and in this video, I will show you step by step how to create a professional website using the Divi theme, the most popular WordPress theme out there. Let me show you what we will cover in this tutorial. This is the website we are going to make with a beautiful header over here. And when I scroll down the header shrinks, there's a colored logo and we see our menu over here with a sub menu. If I hover over here, it looks like this. I'll show you how to create this from scratch. And the great thing with the Divi theme, if you want to change something, you just enable the visual builder. You don't go to a coding page or something like that. You go to the exact same website, but now you can change anything in the website. Just clicking here. I can say web design without a space. I can change this into modeling. This is also a service I provide because of my loops. No, that's not true. And if I don't like it, command Z, control Z, control Z. And if I want to change the background, I click over here and I see this area. So I can also change the text over here if I want to. And I go to the background. I can decide to show a simple color like that or only a gradient background image. Or I can even add a video that we upload or that we get through YouTube. And all the features in the Divi theme are customizable. So right here, I'm talking about the gradient background over here. What I can do, I can increase the opacity or decrease it or change the color. So let's make it blue like that. Increase this. Then I can scroll down and there are more options. I can change the gradient type from linear to radial if I want to. I can change the gradient direction. I can change the starting position. So let's say 30 and then the end position is also 30. Look at this. This is what happens. Now I can change the direction. So there's so much possible when you start working with the Divi theme. If I scroll down, I will show you how to make something like this and I can click over here. I can change the content over here or I can decide to show a different image over here. So I click over here. I use this image. And then over here I can say photography, film and web design. Maybe I'm like, hey, I like the button, but I want to change the color. I can click over here Then I go to design, click on the button over here. I scroll down, I go to the background. I want to go for the darker one. I like it. What I can do now, right mouse click, copy the module style. Now right mouse click, paste the module styles or a shortcut option command V or control alt V on the PC. And in that way you can speed up your workflow. Look at this. This is called a blurb. I really like that word. It's a blurb, but with the same blurb, you can create something like this totally different and using CSS. I will show you how to create animations like these. I want to make this look better. What I can do, I can click over here Then I go to design and then I go to the dividers. I go for a bottom divider. And then I can choose what kind of bottom divider I want to have. Maybe something like this. Look at this. It appears over here. I can change the settings, the height, horizontal repeat. I can flip it. And in that way, it is so easy to create a good looking website. And maybe you're like, but I am not a designer. Well, I have good news for you because with the Divi theme, you can import pre-made layouts that are made by professional designers. So we can just import the areas we want to have and adjust them to the styles of our website. And I'll show you step by step how you can do that. We'll talk about case studies. We'll talk about creating blog posts. We can go to the about page and this is a page I imported using pre-made layouts. So if I enable the visual builder and I click over here on the plus, look at this pre-made layouts. There are 210 pre-made layout packs. What does it mean? 210 pre-made websites you can import in your website. So if I would click over here, look at this. There are nine pages in the same style, a beautiful content like a contact page, a blog page and a about page. And if I click over here, I can see how it looks. The only thing I have to do is import it and adjust it to my wishes and I can create professional websites and save a lot of time. I love this feature and look at this, what I said, 210 pre-made websites about a lot of different subjects. So I imported this page. I changed the color to the style of my website. I will show you step by step how you can do that. And we are going to use a lot of tricks to change the look and feel of our website. So if I would click over here, for instance, and I decide to go to design and I go to 
filters and I change the hue to a different color. What I can do now, I can click over here and I can say extend filter styles throughout this page. So if I extend this, look at this, it will be applied everywhere. The same you can do with colors. I need to be careful that I'm not already showing everything I want to show in the intro of this video, but I'm so excited about this stuff. Let me show you this and then we continue. If I go to design, I go to the button, I scroll down and I see this color over here. What I can do, right mouse click, find and replace. I say find this background color and within this page, replace it with this color. I want to replace all the colors on this page. So if I click on replace, look at this. This one became purple. This became purple. This one. This title. Everything that was that color is changed now. So in that way, you can change the look and feel of your website really quick. Here's the services page. I know the style does not exactly fit the style of our website, but I just want to show you how to get free videos and upload them in your website. And if I enable the visual builder, what I also will talk about is how we can select a certain part of any module. So I can select this area. I can make it bold, italic, underline. I can give it a different font than the rest. I can give things different colors. So I select it, I release it. I can give this a different color. Also over here, there's a text. Maybe I'm like, hey, I want to make this a link. So I make it a link to HTTPS 30 corp.com. Hit enter. Or I say no, this area should be aligned to the right, for instance. Over here, I show you how to have a nice video from YouTube in your background. Another great function, I can increase or decrease the space just by dragging. So maybe I'm like, okay, there's a little bit too much space. I can just drag. What I also can do, I can hold shift, click, click, click. And now I can adjust those areas at the same time, three different modules. I can go to design, go to the image. I want to increase the border, let's say 50, 50, and it will be adjusted everywhere. I want to get rid of this bar over here. So I get rid of it. So over here I say zero and it's gone with all three areas. I want to have a nice shadow. That's how you can do that. So there are so many possibilities to create beautiful website using the Divi theme. And I will talk all about it in this tutorial. We will create a portfolio or a case study area where I can showcase what you've done for clients. We'll talk about the blog page, how you can create blog posts. If you click on it, you see the author, the date, the categories and subcategories, the amount of comments. And I'll show you how to create beautiful blog posts. We'll also talk about comments and approving them and about the sidebar over here. But before you say this is ugly, I will also show you how to make blog posts and blog pages the new way. But I'll show you in a minute how we're going to do that. So this is the blog page, but we're going to make it look so much better than it does right now. Then we go to the contact page so people can get in touch with you. So if I go to the home page, what I want to show you, if I enable the visual builder, Divi can help you to optimize your website so you can get more sales or more leads. How? If I hover over here, I can click here and I can do a split test. What does it mean? I can show 50% of the people that visit my website, this area and the other 50%. This area, it says we bring, bring you lots of clients. This one says we bring your ideas to life. And then I can see the amount of people that click on learn more or get in touch. And in that way, I see what titles are working better. So I can optimize my website for more conversions. And as I said before, we will optimize your website for all devices. But wait, there's more. Check this out. Divi 4 enables you to use the Divi theme builder. Now you can give any page, any layout you want. You can create custom headers like these, for instance. You can create custom footers and you can also change the look and feel of blog posts, blog pages, 404 pages, search result pages, WooCommerce pages. The sky is the limit. You can also decide to show a different header on different kinds of pages. So over here on specific pages, I can select photography. I have a different header than the global header. So if I go to the website, here you see my global header. And if I go to the page photography, you see I have a different header. So you can create custom templates and display them where you want to display them in the website. On all posts, on the blog page, on blog posts with a specific category, on a certain archive page. And in that way you can create a layout for every page you have in mind. 
When you get the Divi theme, you can also make use of a few amazing plugins that come with it. The Monar plugin lets visitors share information on your website and encourage visitors to follow you on social media. And we have the Bloom plugin that will enable you to get email addresses from visitors. So you can send them automated emails or broadcast emails. I have tutorials about both plugins. In the description of this video, I have timestamps. So if you want to go to a certain part in the tutorial, you can click on the timestamp, go directly to that part. If I go too fast for you, you can click over here and slow down the speed of the tutorial. I have been making tutorials for over six years now and people seem to like my tutorials. And every time I do my best to make a better tutorial than the tutorial before in order to give you the best of the best. However, if you have any question, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section and I'll do my best to help you. So for who is this tutorial? This tutorial is for anyone who doesn't want to spend a lot of money on a website. Anyone who doesn't have much time. Anyone who has never made a website before. So for complete beginners. Anyone who wants to adjust and edit their website themselves without waiting for someone to do it for them. And for anyone who wants to learn more about the Divi theme. If you like what you're seeing so far, then please like this video and feel free to subscribe for more upcoming WordPress related tutorials. Now let's talk about the four steps we will take in order to create an amazing website. If you don't have it yet, I will show you how to get a domain name and web hosting and I can give you 60% of discount. Then we will install WordPress. After that, we will get the Divi theme and then we will create an amazing website. If you already have a WordPress website up and running, you can skip step one and two and go directly to the timestamp over here. So the first two things we need in order to create a website are a domain name and web hosting. If you have this already, that's great. Then you can skip this part. If you don't have it, then you can go to webhostingfk.com. Hit enter. And you will be redirected to Name Hero. Name Hero is, in my opinion, the best web hosting provider there is. Why? Let me give you a few reasons. There are more, but one, your website will load fast, even if you go for the cheapest package. Why? Because Name Hero has invested in Lightspeed, which is way faster than Apache, which is used with a lot of different web hosting companies. Here you see an overview what the difference is when you use WordPress. The second one, the prices are really competitive. You get premium web hosting for an affordable rate, which is amazing. And the third one, really important, the support. You can call them 24 seven. You can open the live chat 24 seven and you can leave a ticket and they will get back to you. So three ways to get support. And that's what I love about Name Hero. Now, one of the reasons you get such affordable prices here at Name Hero is because I get an exclusive discount for you up to 66% instead of the regular 50% that you get at Name Hero. And if you want to see what the plans are, click over here on this button or scroll down. And there are four packages, the starter cloud, the plus cloud, the turbo cloud, and the business cloud. So what are the differences between those packages? With the starter cloud, you can start with one domain name. So if you're really on a budget, this is where you can start. You have one website, one gigabyte of RAM. It's just like your computer. The more RAM you have, the faster your computer will remain. Also, if you're doing a lot of things at the same time. So if you get a lot of visitors at the same time, then you can upgrade, but I'm talking about hundreds of visitors per day. You have unlimited SSD storage. What does it mean? You can have 250,000 files on your website, which is more than enough. You have free SSL. That means that you can make your website secure uh, with other web hosting companies that can cost money here. It is free, even with the starter cloud plan and free website migration. So if you have a website already, and you want to transfer it to name hero, you can do that for free. Then we have the plus cloud. What is the big difference? Well, you have more a gigabyte of RAM, so more people can go to your website at the same time and you can have up to seven websites. And the great thing is when you get this package, you can have seven different domain names and all store them under one web hosting package. You get 60% discount. You pay $5.18 per month and then you can have seven websites. So that is less than $1 per website per month. So my opinion, if you're starting, get this package. And if you're really like, okay, money doesn't matter. I just want to go with the best of the best of the best. Then I suggest you go for the turbo cloud. You can have unlimited websites. So you can even become a web design agency, start to make websites for clients and host them all on your website and charge them uh, $20 per month for web hosting, depending on what you want to offer. And the great thing about this package is that your websites become even faster using NVMe storage, which is faster than SSD. So your website will go so fast. And the great thing is those websites are already fast. This one becomes even faster. You have a speed boost plugin and you will have a free domain, which is quite nice. And then if you're like, you know, I have too much money. I just want to get the best of the best of the best. 
then you can go for the business cloud. And then I'm talking like if you have uh, 50 websites hosting on Name Hero, then I would go for the business cloud. The great thing is you can always upgrade later. So you can start with uh, the plus cloud, for instance, and then later go to the turbo cloud, send them an email. They will fix it for you. Uh, what I want to do now, I want to start with a new website. So I want to start with the plus cloud. So the whole year I can decide if I want to create a second website or a third one, and I don't pay anything extra except for the domain name. So in order to purchase it, I scroll down and I go to order now. Then we need to register a new domain name. Well, a domain name can be registered only once. So if I say I want to have facebook.com and I click on search, Facebook is unavailable. So you need to have a unique domain name and I would like to go with 30 WP, 30 WordPress. Then you can have .com. You can have a lot of different extensions. If you want to go international, I would go for .com. And you can go for your own country. So for instance, my country is the Netherlands. I can have this one or the UK. Well, as you see, there are a lot of extensions over here. So there are so many, but I would go uh, internationally for uh, .com and or locally for your own country extension. And talking about names, if you want to start a new business, use that business name. If it's already taken, you can become creative with your name. I highly suggest you always have your own first and last name as a .com. You never know what you want to do in your life. And if you have it, you have it. So I go for 30wp.com. I click on search and it is available and it's for free. If I go for two or three years at once. So I click on continue. I'll explain that to you over here. We can choose our billing cycle. And the great thing is the amazing discount of 60% will be applicable on the first invoice. So if you go for one year, you get one year of discount, two years of discount or three years of discount. And the longer you go, the more extra discount you get, as you see, say 30% or 6%. So the longer you go, the cheaper it becomes. I want to go with one year. And then there are a few extra things we can take over here. Would you like to add dedicated IP address? Well, I don't need all these things. Uh, Auto encrypt is free. We don't need this one. So I click on continue. And then really important, what we need is ID protection. It only costs less than $3 per year. And this will make sure that when you sign up, spammers that will see all the new websites in the world will not spam you with a lot of things like, hey, let me create a logo or do SEO or create a website for you, or they will call you. You don't want that. So if you use ID protection, they cannot see all your details. So click on continue. And the great thing is, this is crazy. The total amount we have to pay is less than $100. With other web hosting companies, really good ones also, you pay around $150, sometimes more, and here below $100. I really like that we save a lot of money. And what we have, we have the Web Hosting Plus Cloud, so we can have seven websites, and we have our domain registration. And since I go for one year, I need to pay around $16 for it. But this is great. This is for 12 months of web hosting and a domain name. You can start your business for just $7 per month. So what I can do now, I can create a new account. So I will leave my details over here. That's not my name. This is my name, my last name, my email address, my phone number, and then my company name. I'm, I have a company with my wife and it's called Ferdinand Anna Media. I'm from this address. So I need to fill in your details over here. How did you find us? Well, through YouTube, because I'm showing you. <laughs> and then you have a support pin. If you want to call them or have a chat session with them, they ask for your pin so you can leave it here and then they know you're really you. And then we need to create a password, of course, make it really secure or you can generate one. And then you need to confirm your password. Then I scroll down and you can pay with credit card, PayPal, Coinbase or credit card with Stripe. Well, I want to go with credit card so I can leave my details over here. I scroll down. Do I want to receive emails for special savings? Well, there's a great thing. Well, every year there's Black Friday and Cyber Monday, and then they gave huge discounts for extending the service. So you can get some money on your Name Hero account, and then Name Hero adds extra money for you. So in that way, you have discount for the next invoice. And if you have read and agreed to the terms of service, you can check this. Keep in mind that when you got here through webhostingfk.com, you don't pay more, but you get extra discount, and I get a commission. So I see that as a Win-win situation. Name Hero will check all your details and see if there's no fraud. Well, if it's you that's filling in the information, then it should be fine. So I can go to the checkout. 
And it says order confirmation order is placed. If you have any questions about your order, please open a support ticket from your client area and quote your order number. Congratulations. Now you have your own domain name and web hosting. That is amazing. Now let's install WordPress. I want to go to the client area. So I want to congratulate you. You have your own domain name and web hosting. That is amazing. And the great thing with Name Hero, your website is live immediately. The only thing is if you go to 30wp.com, it looks a little bit weird. So we need to install WordPress. But the great thing is it's not with all web hosting companies that your website is live immediately. If you want to install WordPress, you click over here on my cloud and then you click over here on web hosting plus cloud. Here we can log into the cPanel and now we can install WordPress. We need to scroll down or we search over here for WordPress and there it is WordPress manager by Softagless. Click on it and then I click on install. So. We see the newest version of WordPress. Uh, here we can choose our domain name. If you have more domain names, you can select one. And then here I want to select HTTPS. So our website will be secure from moment one. We need to remove WP. Otherwise your website will be installed on your domain name.com forward slash WP. No, you want it to be in the root directory. So people go to 30 WP.com and then they go to my website. Here you can give your website a name and a side description and you really need to do this now otherwise yeah you can do this only once no just kidding you can do this in the website i will leave it for now and we will do it later in the website here we can choose a username 30 corp for instance and a beautiful password or oh, hide you can let it be created or create your own let's see if i can go stronger than 65. in real life i'm not that strong so i'd rather be strong on the internet with my password so I can say to people that I'm strong. Man, I'm so strong. And then your admin email, you need to have access to this email address. And then you can select your site language. You can install two plugins, the classic editor and the limit login attempts. And I don't need those. I click over here and I close it because it looks too complicated. This is all fine. You can trust them. This is all fine. And we don't need to install a theme. We will do that from within WordPress. And if you want to, you can send the email installation details to an email address, but I leave it as it is. I click on install. And there it is. Congratulations. The software was installed successfully. So if I would go to this link, WordPress is installed. We just got this domain name and it's live already. This area over here, it does not look good, but it means you are live at this moment. 10 minutes ago, we bought web hosting and the domain name, and now we are live. That's amazing. You have seen how I was able to get 30wp.com. From this moment on, I will work with the domain divi4.com. What we see over here is our website. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live. Officially over here, you see divi4.com, the domain I just bought. And everybody that goes to divi4.com at this moment would see this page over here. We are live. Everybody on the internet can see us when they go over here. And that's an amazing thing. So the only thing is it doesn't look that appealing, but we're going to make it look so much better. The first thing I want to point out over here is that we see this bar. We only see this bar when we are logged in. And from that bar, we can, you see, it will stick with us. Even if we go to this blog post over here, we scroll down, it sticks with us. And through that bar, we can navigate. We can go to the back end, to the dashboard. We can customize the theme. We can add a new post, new image or PDF, a new page, a new user. We can go to the comments in our website if we have them. So let me talk about the front end. This is the front end, what people will see. And the back end. When we click over here, we go to the back end of our WordPress website. And it can look a little bit overwhelming, but I will talk you through this. So the first thing I want to do, I want to clean things up. I want to work with a clean WordPress environment and remove the things I don't use on my website. So first I want to clean up a few things and then I will explain everything to you. So the first thing I want to do, I want to dismiss this message over here. Then I want to collapse this area. And what I see over here, I have one blog post, one comment, and one page. I want to get rid of it. So I click on the post. Here's the post. I click on trash. So it goes to the trash. Then I go to the trash over here and I remove it permanently. Then I can go back to the dashboard over here. 
then I see that overview again. I go to the page. Then we select all the pages that are created with our WordPress installation, bulk actions, move to the trash, apply, and then we go to the trash. You can delete them permanently, individually, or click over here and you empty the trash at once. How great would it be if you could push a button on your real trash can in your kitchen and it would all be gone. I have to empty the trash. I need to do that today. Otherwise, my wife will be mad at me. And I don't want that. Since I'm talking about my wife, she is amazing, lovely. She's pregnant for, with our second child. How great is that? Woo! So let's go back to the dashboard. So at a glance, there are no more pages. So I can collapse this. I can collapse this, this one, and this one. So here we can have an overview of what we want to see. So if you have Google Analytics, you can see how many people go to your website. If you sell something, you can see how many have you have sold today in the last week. But for now, I want to get rid of all this stuff. How can I do that? Clicking here, uncheck everything. And now this looks really clean. So let me walk you through the back end. As I said before, over here, this is the front end. This is what people will see when they go to our website. And if I click over here, I see the back end. Here we have the dashboard with an overview of things we want to show. If there are updates, you can click over here. If you have a lot of plugins or themes or WordPress itself, you can update it over here. Then we have posts. If you want to have blog posts, you can add them over here. You can add new categories, tags. Then we have media. You can upload anything, videos, images, PDFs, word files, whatever you want. And then you can display them in your website or you can link to it so people can download things. Then we have the pages. Think about the home page or the about page or the services page, the contact page, any page you want to create, you can do that over here. When you have blog posts and people want to comment on it, you see that over here, here you can approve comments, uh, remove them, put them in the spam area so they cannot comment again. Then we have appearance over here. We can choose a different theme. So right now, let me show you if I hold command and I click, I open the website and a new tab. Right now we see the 2021 theme and a the theme decides the look and feel of your website. So the content will stay the same but the layout will be different. So right now, if I choose a different theme, look at this. I see my blog, my WordPress, nothing here. If I refresh the page, since this theme is active, refresh, still my blog, my WordPress blog, and nothing found, but this time the look and feel is different. So we're going to use the Divi theme later on in this tutorial, and that will enable you to create a professional, amazing website, and I will show you step-by-step step how you can do that. Then we have plugins. Plugins are additions to your WordPress website. And right now I want to remove those two because I don't need them. So I click over here. So I select everything, bulk actions, delete. You need to deactivate a plugin first before you can delete it, but they're both deactivated. Delete. Yes, I'm sure. So let's take a look at what kind of plugins you can add to your website. Let's go to the popular ones. You can add a contact form. You can optimize your website using SEO. You can add a classic, easier to work with editor. You can add Elementor, an amazing page builder. But in this tutorial, we'll use the Divi page builder. Also, those two are the best in the industry. You can uh, use spam protection. You can transform your website into a web shop using WooCommerce. So that's what I mean with additions to your website. And we're going to talk about a few. Then we can add users. Right now I'm the only user, I'm an administrator. You can add new people, give them a different role so they cannot mess up the website but only uh, adjust blog posts or approve comments. Then we have tools. If we want to export things or import things, I almost never use this. And then we have the settings. Let's talk about a few settings. General, we can create a site title. And this is important because the site title helps you to be found on the internet. So if I say my blog and I search for my blog on Google, blogger, my blog, you see a lot of those words come back. So it's really important that you have a good site title here. So imagine I have a company called Web Divine. I should not put it in the title at the beginning. Why? Most people that want to have a website don't search for my name because they don't know me, but they search for Web Design. New York, for instance. Those are a few ads. And after that, New York website designer, web design, New York. 
web design company, New York. So this is the title of the website. So what I would say is web design, New York. The more to the left you have your keywords, the better you'll be found on those keywords. So don't say New York web design, because then people that search for New York to go on vacation will go to your website. So the most important keywords needs to be the most at the left. So if you offer web design, photography, and film, what's the most important one? Web design after that for you. Photography maybe, and after that video or film, and then New York. So first the keyword, and then the less important things. And at the end, you can say web divine. That's the title of your company. So I can say web design, New York. And after that, as you take a look over here, there can be longer titles. So I can say web design, New York, and then branding marketing marketing so what i also can do what i prefer web design branding marketing new york then the tagline well i have a tagline and it says in a few words explain what this site is about well i can say that we bring your ids to life what do i mean by that I hope you understand what I mean by that. Otherwise, it's a weird uh, tagline. People have ideas for a business and we help them come to life with creating a beautiful branding. We'll create a beautiful website and we will do amazing marketing. So they will be found. So that's what you can do in a tagline. I save the changes. Right now, my website is uh, secure. It can be the case that it's not secure with you yet because um, every hour, Name Hero will do that for you. But in order to make it secure completely, you should put an S over here. But first you need to save the website, otherwise your title will be gone. Because we need to log in again after we have adjusted this. So I click on save the changes. And you need to use the same details as you used when you sign up for your, when you created your WordPress website. Log in. General. And now it is secure. So the administrator email address, this is fine with me. Anyone can register, rather not. And the time zone, really important. Well, I focus on New York. So what I can say, I can search for New York. And the great thing is that when you place a city instead of the UTC stuff, uh, when it is winter time or summertime, I don't know if you say it like that, but you know, sometimes time switches. And then when you have a city over here, the time also automatically switches with it. So you don't have to do anything about it anymore. Just choose the city where you live or where your client lives or where you offer your services and then everything will be fine. Then we have the date format. How would you like to display the date? You can choose on one or do a custom one. And the time format, I like to use capital AM and PM. And then the week starts on Monday. I leave it at that and then I save the changes. Okay. Then we have writing, reading, we'll talk about it later, media. I want to talk about permalinks, really important because right now, if I go to the website holding command and I click, I will do that all the time so I can see the back end over here, the front end over here. Let me get rid of this stuff. Right now, there's no blog post anymore. If I would have a blog post saying hello world, then the URL over here would look like this divi4.com forward slash the date, year, the month, the day, and then hello world or sample post. This is ugly. Google doesn't want to see this. If I search for how to make a WordPress website with Divi, here's my video, but I search for a website. Look over here. It says elegantthemes.com, documentation, Divi, Visual Builder. It doesn't talk about a date or even worse about uh, a code like that. So what you, I prefer you do is use, just use the post name. Or what you can do, click over here and then add the category and then the post name. And then it will display like um, Divi4.com forward slash blog 
forward slash post name, but I prefer post name. So it will say divi4.com forward slash sample dash post, which is better than this one or this one or this one. So use a post name, check it and save the changes. Okay. One more thing before we're really going to start over here. My name is Ferdy Corp. So when I add a blog post, it will say the author is Ferdy Corp. Well, I want to display my full name. So I click on edit the profile. You can also do it over here, user profile. And over here we can change a few things. Maybe you're like, hey, I like to use this color in the back end. Different look and feel. So it has all everything to do with your preference. I'm uh, used to the normal one. So I keep using this one, default one, but you can change it if you want to. Then if we scroll down, I can add my first name over here, Ferdy. My last name, Corpers Hook. Yes, it's a weird last name. It's just the way it is. And that's why I refer to myself oftentimes as Ferdy. I can have a nickname. I can change it. And then display name publicity. Now I can choose what I like. And I choose my first name and last name. And now it changes over here. So now when I've created a blog post, it will say the author is Ferdy Corpers Hook. You can also have your email address over here. And my email address, this one, is linked to a Gravatar account. And that Gravatar account has an image of me. And that's why I see that image over here. So if you also want to display an image, you can scroll down. First, I would like to update my profile. So if you scroll down, you can choose your profile picture on Gravatar. So if you don't have a Gravatar account, you can open this one. You can sign up or sign in. Then upload an image and the email address you use is important because if that email address is the same one as you use over here, then that image will appear automatically. You can set a new password if you want to, but I'm totally fine with my current password. Okay. Let's go to the dashboard. Right now it all looks beautiful. If I take a look at our website, we see nothing found. There are no blog posts. There are no pages. So what I want to do, I want to add a few pages to our website. How can we do that? We can go to the customizer over here. Then we can go to menus and we can create our first menu by clicking here. This is just a reference name. I always call this main menu and I want to assign the main menu to our primary menu. So this menu is the main menu. You'll see it over here in the top of our website. So if I click on next, I need to add a few items and I want to add a few pages. So I click on add items. I click over here and I can add a few pages. So of course the first page we want is the home page. The only thing I need to do is click on home. And after that, what would you like to place on your website? Well, I thought about it and I want to show a little bit about myself, who I am or who my company is, how we started and what we're doing. So I say about, you know, also be about me or about us. I prefer to say about. I offer a few services, web design, branding, marketing. So what I want to add is a page with services. Add. But what I want to do in the sub menu, I want to show those three services. So I create a page for every service. The first one is branding. Add a new page. The second one is web design. I add it. The third one is marketing. I want to offer the three in one solution. So people have an ID and I will do all the rest. That's what my company does. That's how I want to serve my clients. Then I want to show a few case studies. So I can say portfolio or case studies. I think case studies sounds better than portfolio. So I edit and what you can do, you don't have to do this, but you can also take a look at what your competitors do maybe a nearby or somewhere else. So I can say web design, but not New York, but Sydney, other way side of the world. And then I can see what they are doing. Don't copy, but you can get inspiration. So they say home services also exactly the same portfolio or case studies about frequently asked questions, contact support. So in that way you can see what others are doing and you can get inspired. But again, please do not copy. Okay. I'm just searching 
Okay, okay. Let's take a look at services again. Case studies, also case studies, blog contact. So in that way you can get some inspiration. So case studies, I also want to add a blog page. And with blog posts, you can be found better through Google. So you can write subjects or let other people do that about the services you promote. And in that way you can get organic results to your website and convert them into new clients. Then I want to talk about the contact page. People should be able to reach out. So this is our menu right now. If we take a look at apple.com or actually almost any other website, what you see, if I go to Mac and I want to go back to the homepage, there's no home, but there's a logo. And if you click on the logo, you go back to the homepage. So I do not want to display the homepage in our menu. You see it over here, home about services branding. So what I want to do, remove this. And then over here, we have the about page. And then here are services and then branding, web design and marketing are actually submenu items. What I can do, I can click on branding, drag it to the right. Look at this. If I release it right now, it looks like this. Drag it to the right beneath branding also here. So now it looks like this. Okay. If I click on publish, this is how it looks about services, branding, web design, marketing, case studies, blog, contact. Awesome. So let me show you a few things. If I close this and I click on services, you see divi4.com forward slash services, which is way better than the date and the time, all that stuff. It's really clean. But I also want to show you if I go to appearance themes and I grab another theme again and I refresh the page. Right now, the same information, also a menu, but a different style. And that's what you can do with themes. Okay, now it is time to get the Divi theme, the most popular WordPress theme that can help you to create amazing websites. So in order to get it, let's go to 30corp.com forward slash Divi, hit enter, and I can give you 20% off discount. As you've seen in the, the introduction of this video, there are a lot of things you can do with the Divi theme. I have extra tutorials about it. There's so much you can do. And in this video, I will show you step by step how you can create a professional website using the Divi theme. If we take a look at all products over here, it's the Divi Builder, then the Extra Theme, which is special for a magazine theme with a lot of news items and stuff. I will also make a tutorial about that. Then we have the Divi Builder plugin. Well, that is included in the Divi theme. We have the Bloom Email Opt-in plugin, the ultimate email opt-in plugin for WordPress to get more, to get more emails from your clients, send them emails automatically. And we have Monarch, a beautiful tool that helps you to get more followers on social media and show your visitors how many followers you have on social media. So if I scroll down, there are two plans. They exactly offer the same thing except for one thing. This one is per year. So you can pay $17 per year to get all these tools for unlimited websites. That's a great thing. Or you pay one time $199 and you will have the Divi theme and the whole package with all the products for the rest of your life with lifetime updates, with lifetime support, and you can use it on unlimited websites for you and for your clients. Well, if you go to 30 corp.com forward slash element, or you don't have to go there, I'll just show you. This is the competitor of the Divi theme, also a great page builder. If you go to pricing, Look at this. You can only pay per year. And here you can pay $199 per year for 25 websites, but you need to pay it every year again. And here you pay $199 for one time and you will have support for the rest of your life. Here it's only per year. So when it comes to pricing, Divi wins by far. And it is a really intuitive page builder. It works really nice. So you can choose what you want to do. Do you want to start with $70 per year. You can always upgrade later or you want to go for a one-time payment of $199. Use it for the rest of your life on unlimited websites and also use the extra theme, the Bloom plugin, the Monarch plugin, and look at this, hundreds of website packs. What does it mean? Every week Divi comes with a complete new layout pack. So if I click over here, I can import this complete website. Look at this. Everything in the same style. I can change the colors. I can change the style. I can change the information. But everything is there already. It looks professional. It's optimized for all devices. And they have right now, I think around 210. Did I see that correct? Let me see. 210 complete 
website. 209, sorry, sorry, I was exaggerating. But in a week, it will be 210. And you can import those on your websites. As I said before, lifetime updates, lifetime premium support. Uh, when you send them a message, they can find a solution for you. They can log in into your website, fix it for you. The server support is amazing over here. Unlimited websites, risk-free. If you somehow don't like it or you don't like me, you're disappointed in the quality of the tutorial or in the, or in the quality of Divi. For any reason, if you're not happy, you can get your money back. We will refund your purchase, no questions asked. So there's no risk, you can just try it. And over here it says it's a one-time fee and over here it's not a one-time fee. So we can sign up today if we want to. And you can cancel your membership or upgrade to a different package at any time after signing up. You can take a look at what's included, testimonials, frequently asked questions. Oh, you can trust me, this is an amazing tool and this is an amazing deal. $199 for the rest of your life for unlimited websites. So if you want to sign up, you can choose which one you prefer. I want to go for this one. I sign up today and I need to create a username. So I say 30 Divi info at 30 corp.com. I need to create a password. I need to confirm my password, my first name and my last name. I'm from the Netherlands. And if you enter your VAT number, you don't have to pay the taxes. So let me get this number. If you have a company, you have a VAT number. So I paste mine over here and then it will be subtracted again. Then my credit card details. Awesome. I agree to the terms of service and I want to get updates via email. I click on complete registration. And it says, welcome to elegant themes. We can log in over here. Log in. And now we can download the Divi theme over here and look how beautiful everything looks. I, I really like this layout and it's really is simple. I go to my account, I go to product downloads and I can download the Divi theme. So I click over here, there it goes. That's how easy it is. I go to the theme, appearance, themes. I mean, I go to our website, add new, upload a theme. And I drag Divi over here. I click on install now. And there it is. It's installed. And if I activate it, now the Divi theme is our active theme. So if I refresh this page, it looks different. It looks better already, but we're going to make it look even better because there's so much we can do now in order to make a beautiful website. I'm excited. I hope you are too. Over here, we have our menu with our sub menu and we can adjust everything. So if I go to the back end, I can remove all the other themes. Sorry, I go too fast. I click on the theme details, delete. Yes. Theme details, delete, enter. Theme details, delete, enter. Awesome. I can go to diff documentation or follow this tutorial. So what I want to do, I want to add a logo over here. How can we do that? We go to Divi theme options. And over here I can add my logo. If you want to follow along with the same images I use, you can go to 30corp.com, hit enter, then go to tutorials, Divi. And then over here it says, download the images I use in the tutorial. There you go. Okay, I click on it. I bring it to the desktop. And over here, sorry, I mean columns. I can go to miscellaneous, web design, and here I see a few logos I like to use. So, a theme options, options, sorry. Go to logo, upload, select the file, go to the Desktop, images, number six, web design, and I want to go for my logo, web design. I open it, I set it as a logo. If I scroll down and I save the changes and I refresh the page, there it is. We're gonna make it smaller, but right now it's fine. 
over here, we see the color picker default palette. These are the colors that will come back throughout the whole website. So if I edit the page with Divi and I want to choose a color, I can choose one of those colors. But I can also set the colors over here. So if I go to my website, I use this tool over here. It's called the color pick eyedropper, Google Chrome extension. And I can hover over here, grab this color, Command C or Control C. And I want to paste it over here. Tap, and now I have this color. The second color, darker color, copy. Click over here, paste it. And then I want to have a third color, which is for the text. I want it to be black, but not too dark. So um, something like that. Then I go to the fourth one and I want it to be white because I don't want to be distracted with things I don't need. I don't need a yellow color. So I'm teaching about branding or I'm, I'm, I'm having a website about branding. Well, then I should definitely stick to the branding principles. I don't need a green color in my website if my branding colors are those three. A little bit lighter. Yes. Okay. Let me see over here. A lot is okay. If you have a Facebook profile URL, you can place it over here. So I search for Facebook forward slash 30 Corpus hook, hit enter. Grab this link, copy, paste it. Instagram. Grab this, copy. And paste it. If you use something else, you can place it over here. This is all fine. You can add custom CSS. We'll talk about it later. Save the changes. What I want to do now, I want to go to the updates. And since I want to get updates from within WordPress, I need to use my username over here from Elegant Themes. So I go back to Elegant themes.com account account details then i need to go to api keys copy it and here i see 30 divi so over here i say 30 divi as my username and over here i paste the api key i click on save the changes awesome then I want to go to integration. Look at this. Add the code to the head of your blog if you use Google Analytics. So uh, let's go to analytics.google.com. You can sign up for free. Then you can go to admin. I can search over here for Divi. I have it already. Or I can create a new account. I have Divi 4 over here. I go to tracking info, tracking code. And now I can grab this over here, copy it and paste it over here. It says over here, good for tracking codes such as Google Analytics, but I think it's better to place it over here in the head. At the top of your post the bottom of your post, save it. I'm going to leave it with this. This is all not interesting. So I will skip those parts. I save everything. And now if we take a look at our website, it looks like this. Let me close this. Let me close this and let me close this. If you want to know more about Google Analytics, how to sign up, I have a tutorial about it. You can find it over here or in the description. So there are a few things I want to do before we start to work with the Divi page builder. I want to make the logo a bit smaller, change this to uppercase, get rid of this area and this area. How can we do that? We can hover over here and go to the theme customizer. This is the Divi theme customizer. And since we use a premium theme, we have premium options, which I like. So in order to make this smaller, let's go to the header and navigation, the primary menu bar. Here we can change the menu height. So here you see the height of the menu, I bring it back. I want to change the logo max height to, let's say, like this 35. 
that's what I want. Okay. Then there's the text size over here. I can make it bigger, smaller. I think 16 is perfect. So I can also type it over here, 16. Letter spacing is okay. And then the font. I like to use Railway. Over here. I like to use upper cases. So I click over here. And then text color. No transparency. I like to use this color, the one, one of the colors I chose. Okay. When I hover over it, I see this blue area. I want to make all those blue colors pink. So I click over here on the active link color. I change it to the pink one. Sometimes you need to say tap or click somewhere else in order to get a new area. In order to get back to this area, background color white. Drop down of the menu, okay, and then this area I want to be pink. And now, when we hover over here, it is pink. So I want to have everything in the same style. Click outside this area in order to get rid of it. Drop down. How should this appear? Fade. Well, I think fade is perfect. You can also have a different one. And when I'm happy, I can publish it. I think the website is a little bit small from here to here. How can I make this wider? I go back over here, go back to the general settings, layout settings, and then over here we can change the content width. So let's say 1180 tap, publish, and maybe you don't see any change. Well, if we make the website smaller, command minus, now we can see it. So if I would bring this back to, uh, let's say a thousand, then you see it becomes smaller. If I would say 800, it becomes smaller. And if I say 1180, you see it becomes wider. Command zero, control zero to see the right size, but it is made smaller right now. So that's why it's still close to each other. But if I would publish it and I would close it, then you see there is a lot of space over here. So I'm perfectly fine with that. Let me go back one more time to the theme customizer. Then I scroll down to the homepage settings. I want to choose a static page as the homepage. Right now we show our latest blog post on the homepage. I want to change that to a static page and then we can select the homepage, which is home and then the post page, which is blog. And one more thing, let's go to general settings, site identity. And I want to add a fave icon over here. Right now you see the WordPress logo. I want to add my own logo. It needs to be square. And at least 512 by 512 pixels. Well, it can be smaller. Actually, 16 by 16 is also great. So it's up to you what you want to do. I click on select site icon, upload files, select files. And here's my fave icon. 380 by 380. You'll see how it will look. Select, skip the cropping. And there it is. Publish. Awesome. Closes. And now we see the homepage over here. This doesn't matter because as soon as we enable the visual builder that comes with the Divi theme, that's actually the Divi page builder or the theme builder. You can create a whole theme with it. We're going to talk about that. Then this area will disappear automatically. But when we are on the blog page, it will stay there. So that's why I don't configure this area over here. Okay, here's the moment we've all been waiting for. We are going to work with the visual builder from Divi, also known as the Divi page builder. So let's do it. So let's go to the homepage and let's edit the homepage with the visual builder. So how can we do that? We click over here and look at this. This is the Divi page builder. We can have a tour from Nick Roach, the creator or the CEO of the Divi builder, or we can start building ourselves. Well, I leave it totally up to you. I start building myself. So what we can do over here, we can build a page from scratch. We can choose a pre-made layout. And we can clone an existing page. So if you already have made a page, you just want to copy it, paste it, and change a few things, you can do this. So I want to start from scratch because I want to show you what is possible. So I click on start building. What we see now is we can insert a row. What I want to do, I want to close this and I want to start from scratch by hovering over here on this blue area. I click on it. And we can insert a section. I will explain everything step by step. So we can insert a section. In a section, you can have rows. And in those rows, you can have modules. 
let me show you if I would select regular. Look at this. We have one section over here. In that section, we can have one row or two rows or five rows or a bigger and a smaller row. We can choose whatever we want. So if I want to go for three rows, I click over here. Look at this. Three rows. One, two, three. We see three pluses over here. That means we can add a lot of different modules. Accordion, audio, bar counter, call to action, contact form, divider. So you can also search for a module. And I like to start with a blurb. I've been thinking there were grown up people going to an office, maybe in suit. They were talking with each other like, hey, how should we call this? And then they came with the idea, let's call this a blurb. Well, I think the people that decided to call this a blurb should get a medal because it's so every time I think about it, it makes me laugh a little bit. Yeah, let's create a blurb. It's it's a funny word. So uh, I hope you also become happy when you hear the word blurb, 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 blurb. And now we're going to work using the Divi Builder and create a blurb. So now we have a blurb over here, which is a module. We can adjust things in this blurb using this area. In this area, we can change the content. So let's change the title. I can say branding. I can change the text over here. We offer a complete branding. We offer complete branding for your business. Okay. So now I've changed the content. I can add an icon. So instead of an image, I can add an icon over here, an arrow up. So what does it mean over here at the left? We have all the content so we can change the content of the blurb. And then at the second tab, we can change the design. So image and icon here, I can change the color of this icon. We can make it a circle icon, change the color of that. Or how about this one? So again, left content, we can change the text. We can change the image or icon. We can change the link. So over here, I can make the title link to the contact page. So I can say forward slash contact, or I can click over here, search for a page and then the contact page. I can open it in a new tab. So again, here at the left, everything that has to do with content. Also the background, we can give this a background. This one or a dark one or a gradient or an image or a video. Well, I don't want to overwhelm you. Maybe I am doing that already. I want to show you so much at the same time because there's so much to talk about this amazing page builder. But what I want to do, I just want to start building and then I want to show you step by step how we can build a beautiful website. So before we continue, I want to talk about this area. This area appears when you're adjusting the website. So when you click over here and I want to add uh, some audio, there it is again, but this time it is an audio setting module. So depending on the module you're editing, you see different options over here. So right now we see audio. But if I would check this and I click over here, you don't see audio because this is the blurb. So depending on the module you use, you see the options over here and over here at design. So let me show you. I can remove this area. We never use it. Here we have the blue area. That is the section. In that section, we have rows. That is the green area. So one row, second row, and the third row. In those rows, we can click on the plus and add new modules. So one more. I can add a video if I search for it, video, and by default, this video is shown, and then I can adjust the settings of this video. I can have an overlay, I can change the design. Since I have a module in every row, it doesn't mean I can do nothing anymore. I can add a second module in the same row. So I click on the plus over here. I want to add some bar counters. Yes. So that's the basics of this page builder sections in those sections. We have rows and in those rows, we can have modules, but we have also section settings. 
row settings and module settings. So over here, for instance, if I click here, I can say this background should become pink. But then if I check this over here, I can say the row settings background should be purple. And then also here at the modules, we can adjust colors and settings. So when you start to understand how everything works together, you, you, you see how powerful this tool is to make something beautiful from scratch. So that's the first thing I want to do. I want to close this now. I want to start from scratch. When you have your first area over here, you want to build, you only see how you can insert a row. But if you click on the plus, you can also insert something special like this. And every area over here is an area where you can add new modules. So right now we have two areas over here and one big area over here. Close it, close it. So click on the plus. There's also this full width area and there we can insert a full width code, full width header, image, map, portfolio, post title, and slider. I want to go for the full width header. Let's start with that. Okay, let me check this and then I remove this area. So over here we have the full width header. Before I continue to talk about it, let me show you a few other things. If I click over here, I can edit the full width header settings and I can drag this around. So, so maybe I'm working here on this button and I don't want to have this area over here. I want to have it over here. I can also make it bigger. Maybe I just want to focus on the title and on the subtitle and on the button. Then I can make it bigger. What I also can do, I can stack it to the left. Now I see this website becomes a tablet view because this area is smaller. Then I can say command minus, and then I see it in normal view. I personally prefer to make it float. I can change the size over here, depending on your screen. And if you're working here, you can drag it to the right. If you're working at the right, you can drag it to the left. So I think that's a great option. What else can we do? Let me check this. Over here, you can click on the X, then you see those three dots over here. If you click on it, you see a lot of options. First, we can see this whole website in a wireframe. If I click over here, look at this. You see exactly what we have. We have a section and in that section, we have the full width header. So if you have a really big website and you want to find a certain area or you want to see an overview, you can click on the wireframe. You can also click on the plus. And then you zoom out and you see a kind of bird eye website view. <laughs> so you can see everything easier. You can drag things easier to different places. So that's also handy. And through this tutorial, I will show you how we are really going to use this instead of just showing you the theory of this area. Then we can click over here. We see the website in desktop view. We can click over here. We see the website in tablet view. And you can also say, uh, I want to show see how it works on the Galaxy Tab S or an iPad. You can change the width and the height. You can click on the mobile version and then you see how it looks on the mobile version. And you see our header looks nice. This submenu. So that's what you can do. But what you can do in order to navigate, you can also use Command or Control minus. Look at this. I go to the left. So over here, I go to the left. Command minus. I go to the left again. Command minus or Control minus. So in that way you can navigate through all the different views. And by default, you're working with the desktop view. If I click on the X, this area goes away. If I click again, it appears over here again. Then we have the plus over here. If we click on it, we can insert a pre-made layout and look at this 209 layout packs. What does a pack mean? It's a complete website. So if I would click on this layout pack, look at this. There are one, two, three, four, there are nine pages, contact page, a course page, a marketing page. So if you want to, you can install a complete website made by Divi. And the great thing is every week they add a new complete website pack. So we can import the homepage, the about page, the blog page, the contact page, the course page, and the pricing page, adjust the colors, adjust the content, and you're good to go. You can save yourself a lot of time. So if I go back, you can search. So let's search for a yoga website 
you see all those pages over here or you can go for business and here we see an agency layout pack about page blog page and if you click on it you see it over here you can scroll down and you can use the layout so if i click on use the layout look at this And now this website is imported. And if I hover over here, I click over here and I go to design. I go to the image and I can, I can change the color. Then I can say right mouse click, copy module styles, right mouse click, paste the module styles. I want to show so much things, but I will cover them all in this tutorial. But now, since we have this website over here, this page, I can go to command or control minus. Now I can show you what I meant with the overview. So maybe I'm like, hey, I want to drag this area on top of the other area. Now I can do that easier using this. Command minus again. Now I see the framework, so the page header, then the contact area. And also here I can drag things around, release them. And now I see, okay. Here I have a full width area with a hero section. Then I have a section about the contact info with one row with three different modules. And if I want to edit the module, I can just click over here and then change things. Then we can see how things look on a tablet. Okay. And over here I can see how things look on a mobile. Okay, we're over here. What I can do now, I can click over here. And here I can save this layout to my library. So I can say homepage Divi4. I can also export it to a different website if I want to. I can add a category. So I can say home page. That's the category. Save it to the library. I can remove everything. So I can click over here, clear the layout. Yes. And then I start from scratch. Command minus, minus. Now I start from nothing again. I can close this area, open it again. I can go to the settings of this page. So the title is home. I can also have an excerpt, a small text about this home page. We offer a com complete solution to business owners to business owners by creating the branding website and do the marketing. We bring your ideas to life, something like that. And then you use Grammarly to make the text a bit better. We can add a featured image, my logo. We can have a background, but this is all not necessary. I save it. Then over here, I can go to the history. So maybe I want to bring back the page I just had. So I can click over here. Nothing happens over here. And now everything is back. So I can go back. Maybe I don't want to have those colors anymore. So let's see. Base cells, I go over here. And now they are green again. Or if I save things, if I saved it before, I can go to a previous saved version. And if I want to save it, I can click over here or I can say command or control S. How easy is that? And what I can do, I can export this page. Click here, export this home Divi four, three icons, whatever you want to call this. Export the Divi Builder layout. There it goes. And now all of a sudden I have a different page over here, davypractice.com. I can click over here, click over here, click on import. I drag this one over here. I can replace the existing content if I want to. I can download a backup of my current page, which has nothing. I can import the presets that come with this page. I import the page and it worked. The page will refresh. And now I have this page on a different website. So that is what you can do. 
What you see over here is that this area is at the left. That's what the next thing I want to talk about. I can close this. I can drag it to the left. If I open it, it looks like that. I can drag it to the top, top center. So whatever we prefer. I like this one. So I leave it there, but that's what you can do. What else? I can click on this plus. I can also say shift spacebar and there it is. So if you make a lot of websites with Divi, this can be really handy. You're working somewhere and you're like, okay, shift spacebar. I want to insert something. I want to insert a regular section. So now I see a plus where do I want to add the section. I click over here. And there it goes. Now I can click over here. I can choose the amount of columns, etc. That's one of the things you can do and it can uh, speed up your workflow. Let me remove this. What else can you do? Shift spacebar. You can go to the layout, save things, export things. So if I click over here, I can say, you know what? I want to export this page and I can export it. So it's a function with a lot of shortcuts. Maybe you want to go to some place, to a section. So I can click over here. I can go to a module and I want to go to a blurb. I have a lot of blurbs on my page. So if I click over here, I go to these settings over here. So it can help you to navigate through the website. And if you don't know something, click on help and I search for blurb. I have no idea how to work with it. I can have an article or a video. So I click over here and I can learn more about the blurb. So a nice function over here and you can call upon it with shift spacebar on a PC, on a Mac and on a Linux computer. We have layers. So it's actually like the, the framework a little bit. You can see what we have over here. We have the page header, the contact info. And if you open it, you see two rows. And in every row, there's a column, there's a divider. And in that way, you can also navigate through the website without opening the whole frame like that. So you can still see everything, but then see the frames like that or the layers. And over here, you can have help, video tutorials, keyboard shortcuts. And definitely check those out because they can save you a lot of time. What I often do is Command Z or Command S. And then I save it or control shift F7, then it will automatically create a, a website based on artificial intelligence and your competitor's website and, and make the best website possible. Control shift F7. No, just kidding. We can save it. And that is the way the cookie crumbles. So I want to remove this again. Yes. And now I finally want to start from scratch. If we take a look at apple.com, hit enter. What we see over here, it's the introduction of the new iMac with a call to action. Watch the event. Learn more call to action. So apple.com wants to draw your attention to something new and then a call to action. Watch the event so you can get excited about the new tool they're selling. And then a few more call to action. So that's what we also want to do. We want to get the attention from people. So I click over here on the plus full width and I want to go for the full width header. Like that. Check this, remove this, and now I want to style this. How can we do that? I click over here and then I want to create a title over here. So, what I want to tell over here, I want to say what I do and then how I do it. So, first, I want to say we bring your ideas to life. I can have a subtitle by changing blah blah blah. I don't need a subtitle. Then there's a button over here. I want to have the first button says learn more or more information. Learn more is okay. The second button get in touch or contact, whatever you want to call to action. So maybe people are like, okay, I immediately want to get in touch or you know what? I'm not convinced. I want to learn more about the service this website offers or this company offers. Then we have the body text over here. I want to get rid of it and then I want to scroll up again and I want to go for the subtitle and I want to say what I offer. Branding, web design and marketing. Just like over here. So what is next? This is all 
as you see the content area we can have an image let me show you it will be here on top or you can have it at the side a header image like that or a link well then you can say where this should go to learn more we can say forward slash about or click over here link to a page and then say about and then the second link goes to the contact page we can also give the whole module a link so if people click over here they also go to a certain link we can decide it over here but i'd rather go for those two links shoot the links open in a new tab no i want them to open in the same window we can have a different background and over here we can choose a color we can go for a, a gradient if i click on the plus and what you see over here i have this color and over here i have the gradient and you see that the gradient is overruling this background so the more to the right you go the more it will overrule everything on the left so this is overruled with this one let me grab this color and then this color if i scroll down i can change the type to radial i bring it back to linear i can change the gradient direction i like to make it 90 so left pink right purple as you see we can change the starting position so you can also make a straight line like this if i would say 33 and 33 you have a line and then also you can change the gradient so you can do something like that if you want that so that gives you a lot of possibilities i go back to 90 to 0 and to 100 but you can also um, bring this a little bit to the left so you have a more purple than pink place the gradient above the background image this is interesting i will talk about this later because if i want to go for an image i can have an image in the background i can get it at pixabay.com and here you can find royalty free images that you can use on your website without referring to the owner so that's really nice i like to search for uh, New York. Hit enter. You can find this one, or you can use anything over here. So if you see something you like, you can use it. I like this one. Then I can download it for free. This resolution, perfect. Download it. I'm not a robot. Download. And then what I always like to do, I like to rename it so we can be found better. So over here, I hit enter and I say web design new York. I go over here, I click on add background image, upload files, select files. And I go to my downloads and there it is open upload an image and now you see this image why because this image is more to the right than this gradient but as i said before we can scroll down over here we can place the gradient above the background image if i do that then this will be put in front of the image but we see nothing about the image why over here at the color we can tra change the transparency the opacity to something else so over here it says 0.3, you can also say 0.4, and then if I go to the second color, I can bring it down, I can also say 0.4, hit enter. Well, I think it shows too much of the background, so I say 0.8, and then this one also 0.8 or 7. So, awesome. So now you see how it will look. If we scroll, we cannot scroll yet, but if we could, let me show you. Click on the plus, regular area, one row with nothing in it. Okay, now I can duplicate this area a few times. 
So now we can scroll. And when we scroll, you see nothing happening here at the background. The background is static. But if I click over here, I'm still at content. I can collapse this. If I go to the background, to the image, and I turn this on, now you see it looks like that. Okay, so now it's parallax. You can also use a different method, true parallax. That's why I prefer even more. You know what? CSS, it's okay. But now the color is gone, the, the gradient overlay. Well, we still see it here. Well, what happens? It does not work in combination with parallax effect, but we can have a workaround for that. So what I can do, I can remove the image over here. So now I only see this gradient. I click on check mark. Then I go not to the module settings, but to the section settings. And there we can also add a background. So if I go to the background and there I go to the third tab and I add this image. Now it's behind this, but now if I use a parallax, let's say CSS, it still works. So now we have both the gradient and the parallax effect. I'll get rid of this area. So let's go back over here. So we went through the text images, link background, and we have an admin label. What do I mean with that? If I check this and I go over here right now, I see it says section and here it says full with header. If I go over here to the content, to the admin label, I can give this a name. So I can say full with header services with our services. So it's just for reference. If I say command minus minus, I see over here now full with header services. So you can rename everything. So over here at the section, I can go to the admin label and I can say Freddy is cool. And then if I check over here, it says Freddy is cool. It's only not handy to do that because it's not a good thing for reference. Okay, that is weird. Let's put it back. And if you make it empty, just, just say uh, section. I say hero. So we have a hero with our full width header with services. Okay, let's click over here again. What do I want to do? This is all fine. I want to go to design. Now we can give this a style. So we begin with the layout. I can bring everything to the center and that's what I prefer. We can make it full screen like this and to automatically adjust to the area you use. So right now I leave it at full screen and later I want to change it. So we can also create a custom height. We can have a scroll down icon, turn it on. And then over here, if we click here, we scroll down automatically. You can change the icon. I like to keep it clean, something like this. I mean with clean and not too much information. So no circle around it, just a subtle arrow. And if you click, there you go down. You can do that and you can change the color or you can turn it off. Image. If you have an image over here at the right or on top, you can create rounded corners. You can change a border style, change the border width. You can have a shadow, all that stuff. We'll talk about it only we have no image right now. So right now I cannot use it over here. Overlay if we had one. Or could have an overlay over here, really simple. But um, I don't use it. If I want to bring it back, click over here. Collapse this. Then we have the text, all the text. So maybe if a really light background and then you don't see the white text anymore, you then can make this text dark. So over here, you can just say light or dark. And if you say light, everything becomes white. The text is uh, at the bottom or at the center. I like the center. You can have a text shadow. These are some presets that you can work with it. 
So over here you can change things as you see, but I prefer not to have that. Then there's the title text. And if, you, if I hover over it, I see it over here. I can also hover over here, and go immediately to the right spot. So here's the title text. It is an H1. We bring your IDs to life. You can have only one H1 in your page. The rest of them should be H2. H1 is the most important to Google. Title font. I can change the font to anything over here. There are a lot of fonts. I can also search railway. That's what I prefer for my titles. And the font weight. Let's make it bold. And we can make it italic. We can make it uppercase. We can only use capitals like that. I want to get rid of the italic. Only use uppercase. We can underline it. And also here I can say, I want to bring this to the right instead of center, but I like to keep it in the center. We can change the colors. We can change the text size. So let's say 50. We can uh, change the letter spacing, but uh, I'm okay with that. I bring it back we Can change the line height. I bring it back. And also here we can say, I want to have a text shadow. Tempting. Yeah, a subtle, a subtle one. Okay, this one, I like it. Also here we can change those settings, change the color of the shadow, but I'm okay with that. Then we have the body text, but we don't have body text. That's the part we removed here at the content. So I collapse this. We have a subtitle. And again, if I hover over it, I see where it is. So I, if I click here, we can change this to railway or to a different font. This one, I want it to be thin and make it uppercase and height and bigger. It is really thin. Let's make it light. Yeah. And then see if the, the shadow fits. I think it fits. So um, what I want to do, I want to align those three words with the title. Arrow up. Okay. And I think there's not much space over here. So can I, I can change the line height. And I think 1.1 is perfect. Change the shadow color. Then we have the buttons. We can style them. I actually like them how they are already, but we can also have a custom styles for our buttons. So we can say button one should has this color, this text color and uh, the line around it, but I prefer to keep that white, but the background, I can make it this color or this one, or I can make use of a gradient. Change it to 90, but I really don't like this. Ugh, yuck. I can also have an image. I don't use an image in my button. I also do not want to use the background. So I remove it and scroll down. We can change the border radius uh, or the border width. Look at this, bring it back, border radius. Rounded corners. The letter spacing. You can change the font. Well, that's okay. We can make it uppercase. Make the text, text a bit smaller. We can have an icon and we only see that icon when we hover over it. The placement of the icon right or left only show it when we hover over it. Otherwise we'll see it immediately. And also here we can have a shadow. Okay. Let me scroll up again. I want to change the size, text size. Arrow down until I think it's great. 18. Okay. I collapse this. I go to the button two and there the same thing applies 18 and I want it to be uppercase. Awesome. 
So right now it's a full screen area. If I click here and I go to design layout, I can turn this off. And then I can scroll down. I can go to sizing. I can change the content width. So somehow I can bring it back to this area. Bring it to the left only. Scroll down. I can change the height. Only thing is that this does not go with you. So I bring this back. Change the height over here. Max height. I don't play with this, but at the spacing, that's interesting. We can check this and then we can increase the area outside of the header. So we create some space over here and over here, but I'd rather do not do that. But the padding, however, if I say 100, look at this. We create more space and what I like is that you can also do that over here. See that? Just drag it until you're satisfied. So now it looks like this web design with our menu in the style with our colors, same colors, same colors over here. What do we do? We bring your ideas to life. How with branding, web design and marketing. Okay. I'm convinced or not yet. I want to learn more or I'm convinced get in touch and let's see what we can do for each other. So that's what you can do. Save it. Then I want to go over here. I want to go to design and I want to talk about dividers. Look at this at the top. I can have divider. What does it mean? Look at this the divider style. I can have something like this and then bring this to the left. I can change some settings so I can change the height. So I can say, uh, 20 for instance. Or let's make it 40, 40. And then also here at the button button, I can also have the same one also with 40. And then I have two dividers. So let's save it. Let's exit the visual builder, close this. And then it looks like this, but we see a small line over here because of the theme customizer. So we should get rid of it, but actually I have something better in mind. So I click on enable the visual builder. I hover over the section, edit it, design dividers, the top divider. I want to have nothing and only at the bottom. I want to have something like this. Sorry, you're still at the top. I like to be on the, okay. At the top, I mean button and then this one and I can change the height, not too high, subtle, repeat itself or not. I can flip it. And actually I prefer another one more like this and I can change the height. Then I can also change this to one pixel. Awesome. I like it. We bring your ideas to life, branding, web design, marketing, learn more and get in touch. So I save it command S and then I want to add my second area by clicking over here and I want to have a regular area with three columns. I want to go for a blurb. So I click over here and then I scroll down and I can adjust everything. First, the content again. So here goes my title. I want to talk about my three services I offer branding, web design and marketing. So I want to go a little bit deeper about everything I offer. So over here, the title is branding. Then I want to have a text over here. Well, the text can be about anything. So in your case, it can be something different. So I want to work with dummy text in order to get it. You can search for dummy text generator click over here 
And there it is. Just grab some text. If you use this text on your website instead of a text of a competitor, just as a text to stand there before you have your own text, then you cannot get into problems. So I use this text and nobody can do anything to me because everybody can use this text on their website. Don't have too much text on your website because these days, if I would have an image over here and a big area of text, people tend not to read it anymore because our attention span is shortened in the latest years. So small text, not too much in a few sentences, what you're doing, uh, but work with big titles, images, and the videos if you can to show to your viewer what you can do for them. What I always think when I make a website is what do I want to tell the visitor? What should the visitor see? I was on a website yesterday and it was just weird. I had to search for things. It was totally not informational. And it should be really clear on your homepage, on your whole website, what your website is about, what service can you offer? What can you do for your client? Keep in mind that in your website, you should make clear to your visitor what you can do for them. It's okay to, to brag about yourself. I work for this client and this client and Adidas and Nike. I don't know for who but then come back like, okay, I've done this and this, but what can I do for you? What do I do as a service? Make it clear on the first thing people will see when they enter your website and that will help you to get more clients. And that's what we want. We want to serve clients with the services we offer. And that's why you're watching this web tutorial probably so you can uh, learn how to do that. So let's continue. So I can add an image over here or I can use an icon. Well, an icon that has something to do with branding. I can scroll over here. So if I see something I like, we're going to design your branding. So I can do something like this. So I have the icon, the title and the text. So when it comes to design, there can be a link. So this whole area can link to, to a certain page. In this case, if I click over here and I search for the page, I can search for branding. Okay. And then we can have a background. You see which area is affected. Okay. And now I can make it look better in the design area. So here at image and icon, I can change the color. I can make it a circle icon. So now I need to have a different background. So what I can do, I can make it this color and then this color white. I can have a circle around it. So you can do a lot. I like to keep it simple so I don't need the circle border. I can place it on top or I can place it at the left like that. We can align it to center, right, left. We can use the icon font size, change it. And then we can talk about the text. The text I want it to be in the center. You can also make it justified and then it will look like this. I prefer the center. Dark, we can have a shadow. I don't need that. And then we have the title text over here. Let's make it H2. I like to use a real way for all my titles in the website. And capitals again. It looks perfect. Then the title text size. Make it bigger, but I'm happy with it. So let's go to the body text. I like to use open sans and that was the case already. Regular, no, no uppercase or anything like that. It's already in the center. The color is okay. What I can do if I'm like, yeah, I want to use this color, but I think it's a little bit too dark. Then I can go to a new color or I can go to this icon. Click on the fourth color, make it light gray, click somewhere else, finish editing, save colors. And now I have a new color over here. I can use that one. So that is what you can do. We can go to sizing, change the content width, make it smaller for instance. Take a look at the space and we'll take a look at that later. We can have a border. 
So um, first let me add some pixels. Then we can give it a color. And then we can go back to spacing, go to padding and increase the space a little bit. And now it looks like that. So that is what you can do. Let me show you something else. I can also create a blurb over here. Blurb. And this is still also a little bit of practicing. Uh, you know what? What I will do? I will remove this and I want to duplicate this area. And I want to drag this one to the right. Now I will adjust a few things over here. So here at content, I like branding. I like the text. I go to the image. And this time I say, no, I don't want to have an icon. I want to go for an image. Let me use this one for now. Then this is all fine with me. Then I go to design. What I just did over here, I made it smaller. So I need to go to sizing. I bring this back, clicking over here. Here I have padding, you should see. So I can go to the spacing and I, I can understand in the beginning it's overwhelming all those options. The more you play around with it, the easier it becomes. So here at spacing, I say nothing for now. Okay. What I want to do now, I want to go to the image settings. Look at this image and I can add design. I want to use rounded borders, but only at the top, actually not at the bottom. So I can uncheck this and then over here, left button zero and the right button also zero. So now I have those nice curves over here, but what I see the border is still like this. So I need to go to the border, scroll down. And if you don't want to scroll down, you can also scroll up and collapse the area. Then I want to go to the border. And also here I want to uncheck it and I want to say 20. Look at that. 20. Over here, zero. It's almost aligning. So over here, maybe 23. And I want to decrease the thickness. So that's what you can do also. And over here, there should be more space. So now I can go to spacing. And then you have padding. Padding is creating space from the inside of the element. So if I would say top, it would create space over here. That's not what I want. There's also a margin that will create space from outside of the element like this. So the whole element will go down and I can make it smaller by adding the left and the right. If I check this, I will simultaneously increase the number for left and right. As you see over here, and everything will adjust as you see. So in that way you can play around with the margin. Let me bring this back to zero. Also here, zero, but here at the bottom, I want to have a little bit more space. So over here I can increase that. As you see, it's the same module, but totally different from this one. And that's what you can do with all the modules. There are so many modules and with every module, you have so many options and you can make it look better. If you want to learn more about every individual module, you can go to ferdicorp.com forward slash divi dash modules, hit enter, and you'll go to this page and here you can see videos about every single module. So if I click over here, I see a video tutorial or blog post tutorial, and you can see what you can do with this. So that's what I also like about elegant themes. All those documentation areas, they help you to support. They do their best to help you, to enable you to create amazing websites. So if you get stuck, you can follow one of those tutorials or you can reach out to the support and they help you and they help you really well. So I've shown you those two examples, but what you also can do, look at this. This is what I prefer. I save it, command S, look at this. You want to create a website. So maybe you're like me, you're not a designer. Well, I feel, don't feel like a really good designer. I try a few things, but I, I do not often come up with my own ideas. I see a design and I'm like, okay, I can do that. I know the technical stuff, but designing is 
it's something else. But the great thing with the Divi theme, there are more than 210 Divi layouts. So they, they hire designers, they create complete websites and we can import those websites or we can import certain parts of those websites. They are optimized for all devices and then we can change the colors and the content and that makes our website look amazing. So let's talk about that in the tutorial, which is right now. We're already talking about it. Okay, let's go back to the computer screen. Well, what you can do, you can click on the plus over here. So you can click here, click on the plus, and you can go through all these pre-made layout packs. So I can click here, I can go to a certain page, and if there's something I like, one area, doesn't matter which one, maybe this one, I can use this layout and I can use this area in my website. It's optimized for all devices and that will save you a lot of time. So for me, I'm an agency with branding and marketing services and of course web design itself. If I search for agency, I can scroll through all the pages. If I see something I like, this one for instance, I can use it in my website. So let me scroll a bit further. Not everything is loading correctly. I like this. So I click over here. Let me see if there are other pages that offer things I like even more. This one for instance. Or this one. All those things, I can add them all to my website. This area over here, how many uh, projects we already have done. So let me go to services. I use this layout. I don't replace the existing content, otherwise it will be gone, what we've created so far. Use this layout. This will take a second. And now if I scroll down, I have this area. I have this area really nice, but I don't want to have this area. So over here, I click here and now I have this over here. I don't need this and I don't need this stuff. So I remove it all. I like this one. So I keep that one. I like this one. I keep that one I like this one. Okay. Command S or control S. Now I save it, but it's not in the same style of our website. So what I can do now, this is an image or an icon. Let me see. Image. It is an image. Yes. But what I can do normally, I could save it, go to Photoshop, change it, change the colors into our styling. But right now I can go to design, scroll all the way down. Then I see filters over here and look at this. I can change the color right now. I don't have the exact number for it, but I can just scroll to the right until I think this is in the style of our website. Awesome. So I'm happy with this. Let me click there again. Go to content text over here. I say branding. I can change the font at design title text. Title, Railway, and bring it to that. Then look at this. Close it. Right mouse click. Copy the module styles. Paste the module styles. Wow. Now it's in the same font. Uppercase, also here. Wow. That's how easy you can change things. So then there's this button over here. I can say more info or more information. Again, I go to design button and the color. I change it. Okay. The button font, font, real way. Copy module cells. Paste the module styles and paste the module styles. And also here, I can um, let me do it like this. Copy the title, 
and see command V and command V. So the great thing is about these areas, they are all optimized for all devices. So if I save it, now I can check how it looks on a different device. So I can click over here. Now it looks like that. I can click over here or I can say command plus or control plus. It looks like that. But this does look a little bit weird. So what I can do, I can click over here. I can go to this area, click over here. And now I will only change things for the tablet view. So I go to design. I go to the title text. I can change it. I won't have it in one row like that. Then I go to the other text. I can also click over here. Make it smaller like that. Voila. How about this area on the mobile? I can say over here at the settings advanced. Look at this visibility. I can disable this on the phone. So on the phone, you will not see this area. What I can do now, I can duplicate this whole area. So that's what I will do now. So I have two now. I click over here. I go to advanced and at visibility. I say disable this on a tablet and on a desktop, but turn it on on a phone. So right now, this area will be shown on a phone. And this area will be shown on a tablet and on a desktop screen. So now I can change this completely and it will not do anything for the tablet view or for the monitor view. So I can uh, change things over here. Title text. Make it bigger. Or make it smaller into two lines. This area, branding, web design, marketing, I can decide to change the text. We bring your IGs through to life through branding, web design, and marketing. I can go to design, body text, no, 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 subtitle text. On. Check this. Title text. Okay. Something like that. We bring your ideas to life through branding, web design, and marketing. And then over here, content. I can say I don't want to have a second button, only the first one. Learn more. So let me show you how it will look on a monitor monitor. Okay. Let me close this and let me exit the visual builder. So this is how it will look. What I see over here is that this area is in front of the other area. So let me go to the visual builder, fix it really quick. Okay. Let me scroll down, go to this section and we go to advanced. I scroll down to position, I scroll down again, and then at the Z index, I say 10. That means a Z index is like a layer. This layer will be in front of this area. Command S or Control S. Exit the visual builder, and right now it is in front of that area. So, what happens if I make the screen smaller now? Look at this. This is the iPad view should change this color and this is the mobile view. So you see the, the button is gone, the second button and this is a sentence and this is the other way I've shown it. So that's what you can do with optimizing your website for all devices. Uh, I need to enable the visual builder. What I need to do over here at the text design title text over here. I can change the size. So let me click over here. Now, if I say 30, 
go back. I don't know why it did not work just uh, now, but now this is better. Click over here, do the same thing, go to the title text, click over here, and here you can also make it smaller until I think it fits perfectly. Yes, so bam, bam, and then over here you will see this area. So that's how it works. But what I want to do, I want to make those icons smaller, but they're not icons, they are, look at this, they are images. So what I can do, it's a little bit a weird way of working around it. Shift command four, let's see how wide I want it to be. Let's say 80. So what I can do, I can go to the back end, save and exit. Go to media. And I go to those icons. They're now twice as big. I can edit the image and bring it back to 80. And I say skill. Okay, then I go to the left, edit image, 80, scale, left, edit, 80, scale. I think that's it. So now if I go back to the website, enable the visual builder, I scroll down, I click over here, go to the image. And I select the first one. Okay, then I go to the second one. And I go to the third one. Or you can decide to use an icon. So over here, you can also double click instead of uh, going to the Cock wheel, is it called a cock wheel? This just double click web design and marketing. Okay, I'm happy. I hope you are too. Also, besides the idea of making a great website, I hope you're happy today. You have a great day. You're happy following this tutorial, doing something new for your business or for your personal life. Now I'm also hoping you're happy with the results. Yes, okay, I am. But let me show you something else we can do. Look at this. I can duplicate this whole area like that. Now, I don't like the, the padding. Over here, you see this area is on top of this area. It has everything to do with the spacing. So I want to fix the spacing over here. Click over here, go to design spacing here everything seems to be okay so i need to go to the row design spacing and here i see minus 80. so if i would say zero it will be brought back also here zero okay what i can do look at this this is still a blurb a blurb setting i want to show you how we can tone, totally change the look and feel of this blurb. So what I want to do over here, I want to make use of a dark area. What I prefer to do, I like to maintain the same colors in the website. So you know that I use those colors also here. But I, when I have a light area over here, after that, I want to have a dark area. So light, dark, light, dark, because I think, yeah, for me personally, that's what I prefer. So over here, I want to have a dark area. So here is the light area, duplicated this area. And this one, I want it to be dark. So I go to the background and I get this color. Okay. Then I want to go to the row. I want to go to design, spacing, and at the padding, let's say 80. Okay. Awesome. I want to get rid of those buttons. Hover over it, remove it. Okay. I want to tell people why they should choose us. So over here, I have a row already, this green area. 
and I want to click on the plus. I want to add a new row, but this time only one row. Over there, I want to have a text. So I click here and I say, why choose us? Command A, heading one. Then I go to design and I go to the heading text, make it H2. Sorry, I need to make it H2. And then heading text H2. I can make it real way. I can make it medium, uppercase, bring it to the center and make it white. Then I can say command minus and command minus and command minus. And then let me see over here. I see this row. I want to drag this row top of the other row. So now if I say command plus, I see it's over here on top. Command plus again. So I go to the normal desktop screen. Okay, there's a lot of space over here. I want to decrease that just like this. And over here, increase the padding or margin a bit like that. Why choose us? Okay, the first reason. Click over here. Because we deliver professional work. I want to scroll down. Don't have too much text over here. That's enough for me. Now, something like that. Then I don't want to use this image over here. So I want to go for an icon. I can remove this search for an icon. And what represents professional work? I want to go for a check mark. Okay, but what I don't like is this white background. I don't want to have that. So let me go to the background, remove it, and I want to go to design text, make it light. Awesome. And what I want to do, I want to make use of custom CSS. Well, I don't want to teach you how to write code, but I will explain you a small code. So in order to get that code, let's go to ferdicorp.com, hit enter. Then we go to tutorials, Divi. We scroll down and I want to go for the blurb CSS. I copy this code, command C, then I go to the website. I click over here on the module. Then I go to advanced custom CSS. And then here at the main element, I paste this code. Wow, look at this. So what does it say? This code says the border should be one pixel. It should have this color and the padding should be 25. So there's 25 pixels of padding and the border radius should be four pixels. So there's a small border over here. So over here, I can change the border radius to 14. And then you see it increases. I actually like that more. We can change the color, but right now we see over here that it is blue, but here it is pink. Why is that also this pink? Because here at design, if we scroll down at the filters, we still use the different hue. So if I bring this back, you see the real colors. So if we go back to advanced, to the custom CSS, I can click over here. Now I can use a different color. Well, I have that color already. So let me check this. Click over here. Go to the button. Then at the background, I want to get this color. So I can click over here, copy it. Then I can go back. Advanced custom CSS. Over here, I paste the color. Nice. Then I want to go to design or I can hover over here, click here, change the color to white. Okay. And I like it. So I want to get rid of this one and of this one, duplicate it twice, drag it over here and again, drag it over here. Why choose us? We have professional work. What else? Clear. 
communication, communication, clear, clear, clean, clear. Okay. And then at the icon, let's see if I can find something that fits with that. Maybe a person. And a third one, fast delivery. Search for an icon. So something like a clock. Okay, so you see with a blurb, you can create something like this or create something like this, but there is so much more we can do. If we go back to the website, ferdicorp.com, over here, you see the blurb animation CSS. So we can copy this and we can uh, again, paste it in the main element. What you also can do, just wanted to show you that we can save it and we can go to the back end to Divi theme options. Then we can scroll down and over here. We have custom CSS. I can paste it over here. And what this is saying, the blurb animation. So when people hover over here or over the blurb, there's a transition of one second, which will make the background color, this color. Well, I can choose a background color over here. This one, copy it for only this area. Scroll down. Now you will replace it over here. But what we need to do, we use custom CSS here at the Divi theme options. I need to copy this area between the dots, dot one, dot two, copy it. I need to assign this animation to the blurbs. So I save the changes. I go to the website and I click on enable the visual builder. Then I scroll down and if I hover over it right now, nothing happens. But if I click over here and I go to advanced CSS and ID classes, and I paste this as an ID class or a CSS class. Look at this. Do you see that? So I like it. Copy the module styles, paste them over here and paste them over here. So what I can do, just a small design thing. I want to make the border white. So I click over here, go to advanced, go to our custom CSS. And over here I say F six times. I type it one, two, three, four, five, six, or three times also. Okay. So now it looks like this. Copy module styles, paste the module styles and paste the module styles. So. What else? I click over here. I can go to design and I can scroll down all the way. I can go to animation. I can say fade in, slide in, and I can say how to slide in from the right or down or up. I like up. Then I can decide how long it should take. So I can make it a really slow animation. Let's say 1500 seconds, milliseconds. <laughs> Otherwise it will take a little bit long. So this will be 1.5 seconds, but you can also have an animation delay. So over here I can say 250 milliseconds. Okay. Let me copy this again, copy the module styles, paste the module styles and paste the module styles. Then over here, I go to the design area, to the animation, and I change this to 500 milliseconds. And over here, design, animation, and then the delay will be 750 milliseconds. So let me show you the result. Command S first or Control S. So it will be saving the page. Exit the Visual Builder. And as soon as I scroll down to that area, Wow. And when I hover over it, so that is what you can do with the amazing Divi builder. I'll take a break now and I'll just do this for a few minutes because it's so satisfying. Wow. 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 
And of course you can use different colors. You know, there's so much to show. Uh, let me show you something else. Over here you see the background and you see the gradient. So maybe I also want to have a gradient. So I can go over here to the section background, change it to the first one and to the second one and change the direction to 90. I got money. Look at this. This is also always so much. <laughs> I made one euro 68. Yes. I can go to the store now and buy bread. Woo. So I can also decide to keep the angle of the background the way it is. Or 180. Because then the background appears a little bit better. So a lot of things you can do. And I like to have a little bit more space. Yes. So one more time, save it. Let's see the result. Okay, this is also an animation. Why choose us? This is why you should choose us. We're very professional. We're clear in our communication. We have a fast delivery. Donek Egat Malasueda Corbitur Nanula. And I added this to our website. So um, how would I fix this? Enable the visual builder. Let's scroll down. Click over here. Sorry, now I'm duplicating it. Command Z. Hover over here. Click. Design. Align. Bam. This color. Check it. Click over here. Design. Button. Background of the button. Bam. Okay. Over here. If I want to, I think it will not work over here. Uh, sorry, if I would go to uh, filters, I think no, that should not be done. So I like it, leave it the way it is or use different images. And here again, button, background. But now, right mouse click, copy module styles. I cannot fit. Uh, it fit, doesn't fit in the screen. Paste the module styles. And that's not working. This is a different module. So people can log in if they want to. I don't want that. So I remove this. I can duplicate this one. Make this one to the right. And as I said before, I can also make use of a darker background now. Or Look at this. Hover over here, right mouse click, copy the section styles, and then over here, hover over here, right mouse click, paste the section styles. Okay, so far so good, but in the middle there's a different background, so I need to go over here, design, sorry, content, background, remove it. Here I can drag. Some make some space. Okay, if I want to get space over here, click here, go to design. Sorry, I'm going a little bit fast, maybe, but uh, through the through the tutorial, it should become more clear. Spacing uh, margin, let's say eighty and eighty. Then over here. We make it white. Copy. And scroll down. Paste module styles. And the more you work with this, the easier it becomes to navigate through your website. So I like those colors over here. And these colors are not good. So let me see where this starts. Click over here. Background. Let's make it purple. Okay. And then over here we keep it purple. 
or purple over here and then the gradient towards this blue color. What is the, this blue thing? Uh, first, click over here, design, button, the button, make purple, uh, pink. Oh no, I did the wrong thing. Sorry. I'm, I'm trying to be funny and then at the same time, I do not focus anymore. So command Z, control Z, click over here, design button, but not the text, but the background. And then this color over here, let me see how they did it. That go to the background and over here, there's an image. You don't see it, but if you remove it, this arrow will be removed. So what you can do, you can um, grab this over here and you see this gradient because of this area. So I can remove this and over here you see this area. So you can use parallax effect like that or make it CSS. So you can create something like that. You can change the background image size to cover. Or to fit. Or the actual size. And then you can say I want to have it. I have it. I want to have it in the bottom right area. Like that. So in the style of our website, this is now what we have created. And if I save it, and I exit the visual builder, this is our homepage. We bring our ideas to life, branding, web design, marketing, learn more, or get in touch. We do branding, web design, and marketing, talk a little bit about it, more information. When I hover over it, it's blue. Let's change that color in a minute. When I hover over here, it becomes pink, bundle and save, get a quote. Those animations over here, no call to action. Our customers, we can change this color, change this color over here. And that is how it all works. So let's change a few things. And I'm, I'm doing that on purpose. So you can see, I, I did not forget it on purpose. I forget it accidentally, actually, actually, la, la. but uh, <laughs> accidentally, accidentally. I know I write it totally wrong. Accidentally. Accidentally. Okay. So um, let me show you how I go over this. When I when I hover over here, it becomes blue. So I go to the design because I know it's not a thing about the content, but about the design. Then I go to the button. And over here, I see this. When I hover over it, I can change those colors. So now I can say, make it purple. So let's go back to this area. I can also say when I hover over it, make it a gradient. So like that, right mouse, click copy module styles, paste the module styles and paste the module styles and then also here, paste the module styles, and then I need to bring it to the left again at design alignment, left. Same over here, paste module styles. Okay, now I can duplicate it. And I don't want this, so remove it. Then there was a blue area. Command Z. First you need to hover over it and then click design line color. Okay. We see this background. We can change it if we want to. I'm perfectly fine with that. Also here, paste the module style. Now when we hover over it, it changes the color. OK. 
Okay, command S. So how does it look on a tablet? This looks fine. This looks fine. Okay. So far, so good. Okay, let me show you one more thing. Of course, not one more thing. There's so much more to show. Maybe I'm like, you know what? I don't need this. Then I can get rid of it. I can get rid of this. But now I have this area over here. So what I can do, I can click over here. I can remove the column. Or I would go over here. Then I can change the amount of columns I want to have. And now it looks like that. That's how easy it is. Save. Exit. So one more time. Later in the tutorial, we'll take a look at the footer. Right now, I want to go to the theme customizer over here and show you a few more things. And if you don't see this correctly, you see a hamburger menu over here. You can say command minus one time or two times. So you see the website as it will be shown on a normal desktop like this. So I can go to the general settings and this is what we discussed already. Now you can add this fave icon over here. We have the layout settings over here and we can enable a boxed layout like this. So your website will be in a box. And then if you make the website smaller, so let me cut this moment, one moment. And if I say 900, 900, then the minimum is 960. The website will become smaller. If I say 1400, the website will become bigger. If I make the website even smaller, you can see it better. Okay, so right now it's 1400 in pixels. If I would say 960, then you'll see how small it will become. This is a small glitch, no problem. If I click on publish and I close it, and I go back to the theme customizer, you see it's now okay. I'm doing a lot of weird things with command minus, command plus, so that's the reason why it's having a little bit of trouble. So right now we have a boxed layout, and as you see, when we scroll down, the menu becomes smaller and the menu shrinks a bit. I mean, the logo becomes smaller. I think what we have made so far, it is amazing. And maybe think, no, I see a line over here and it's ruining my whole website. That's only because I'm zooming out. So it's gone. It's gone. <laughs> the whole website is healed. Wow. Come on, zero. Come on, minus twice so I can see it a little bit better as it should be shown. General settings. Let's go back to the layout settings. I bring this back to 1180 Then there's the website gutter width. Look at this. Here I have, I have three rows. If I change this, it goes closer to each other or it separates more. So also here, so in that way you can change the style of your website at once. And if you don't want it, bring it back. Then we can use a custom sidebar width. Or well, if I would go, let me publish it. I would go to the blog page. I can change the sidebar width. So let's make it wider and then you see immediately what the result will be. I go back to the home page. Then we have the section height. How high should every section be? If I take a look at this one and I increase the height, everything gets more space. Also this, is a small glitch. If I publish it and I close it, it will look fine. Bring it back. Then we have the row height so that can increase the space between every row. So this is a row, this is a row. If I increase it, there's more space between the rows. Bring it all back. Bring it all back. No, don't stop. Never give up. For the people that are older than 30, they will know the song I'm singing probably. Or not. Who cares? Let's continue. The theme accent color. Well, as I've shown you before, I use a color pick eyedropper 
or you can just grab the color of your logo or the main color and paste it over here. Let's publish it. And of course I want to disable this. I want my poster to be full width and 1180 pixels of width. Typography, you have seen me doing a lot of things with the titles, creating, uh, changing it to real way and all that stuff. So first, but we can set it up in a way it's automatically the right font. Over here first, the text, body text, I can make it bigger and it should become bigger. Sometimes it has a problem updating things real life, real time. So this one can become bigger. You can also get the arrow up, arrow down. Then we can change the body line height. So there will be more space between every line. Then we have the header text size. So if I increase this, you see it becomes bigger everywhere. Letter spacing for the header, the header line height. So if there are two lines, you'll see what happens or the space between different headers. I bring it all back and then we can make every header italic, bold and underlined. But I prefer to do this. I like to make it uh, uppercase for every title. So let's see if there, yeah, here's normally not uppercase, but I can say every header should have an uppercase title. And the default font, so right now it's this one, but if I say over here, a real way, or I search for it, wow, so many fonts. A real way, come on, with an A. There it is, you see it changes. And the body link color, every link should have a certain color. So if there's a link, it will have this color. The body text color, I can change it over here. So if I make it pink, you see it becomes pink. But I like the default one. Or I can choose one of the colors. This one a little bit lighter, well, maybe something in between. Click outside of the color area in order to get rid of it. The header text color, same one, 75. Okay, publish. What else? Background, uh, that's only applicable if we use a box layout. So I can make the background green. But then I need to make sure that every area that has no background should have a white background. Otherwise, it looks a little bit weird over here. But I prefer not to use this because I like to be full width. Okay, well, there are more settings. We'll take a look at it later if necessary because right now it is not. So I, except for one thing. If I go to the tablet view, well, now this color is the right one. And now you can navigate through the website like that. Case study page. Well, there's nothing yet. And if I click over here, I go back to the homepage. So I'm happy with this color. I'm happy with the menu. You can go over here, go to the primary menu bar, scroll down and you can play around with the colors over here. So if you want to have this color to be pink. Active link color should be this one, so that's correct. But the drop down menu background color, I can change it like that. Bring it back to default, play around with it, see what, what is working for me. And also here I can play around with the settings. I publish it. Hello there. Are you still having fun? Are you learning new things? I hope so. We're going to talk about the header, but I created a separate tutorial on how to do multiple things with the header. So I will insert that tutorial in this video. So don't be scared if there's a different logo 
everything is fine. So let me show you how you can do different things, different things, different things with your header. Yes. Then we can go back to the header and navigation, the header format. Right now we have at the left, the logo and at the right, the menu, we can change it to logo in the center and the menu below. And the great thing is you see the result immediately. Let me say command zero. So focus on the header. I can say centered logo in line. So right now we have our menu over here and here at the left. And then here is the logo. And of course we need to make our logo smaller. I will show you how you can do that. We can say slide in. So you need to click on this hamburger and then slides in and we can go to a different page or full screen. So we click over here and then we see our menu and people can search. I can also say default, but enable the vertical navigation. So everything is here at the left or hide the navigation until we scroll. So now you see nothing, but when we scroll, then it appears, which is also nice because then you can let people focus on the header you have. I turn it off. I use default because everybody does it. And sometimes people want to have a special website that looks totally different, but then people do not know how to navigate. Right now I see my logo at the left, menu at the right, and I know how to navigate through this website. So I suggest you do the same logo at the left, menu at the right. I go back. Then we have the primary menu bar. We can make it full width. So if I make the site smaller, the logo stays completely at the left and the menu at the right. No matter how big the screen is, we can hide the logo image if you want to do that. I turn this off by the way. We can change the menu height, increase it or decrease it. How about 40? And the logo maximum height, we can decrease it. I also like to say 40, not too big. Then the text size over here of the menu. I like to make it bigger, something like this. And then we have letter spacing and we can increase it. Like this. Then the font, again, I would like to say a real way and uppercase. I prefer that and you can make it bold if you want to. I uncheck that, make it italic, change the text color. Again, I like to say 444, 444. And the active link color. So if you're on the about page, the about page will turn. I would like to say this one. Yeah, that's okay. Then we can have the background color. I can also say so like that or maybe transparent, but then you cannot see the menu that well. So we can do this. Let me show you something. Background color. I say black. And then transparent a bit. And then you can say make the text color, make it white like that. But I don't like it because now you don't see my logo anymore. But if you have a different logo, you can do this. And then when you scroll down, you can make it look different. So let me show you how to do that. So first, let me take a look at the drop down. You can change those colors over here. You can change the animation right now. It fades. I can also say expand or slide or flip. I prefer fade. So what I want to do now, I go back, I go to the fixed navigation settings. So when I scroll down, it looks a little bit weird. How can I fix that? Well, these are the fixed navigation settings. So I can change the menu height, the text size if I want to. I like to leave it as this. And then I can say the background color, let me see, should be purple or white. Let me see, it's a glitch again. So if I would say something like this, that's what happens. I like that. And here I can change those colors to this one or let me see purple, purple. Publish, close it, and I scroll. It looks like this. The only thing, as I said, is that my logo is not made for this, but maybe your logo is, and then I really like this option. The only thing is when I go to the about page, 
it also looks like that. But for every page, we will fix this. So it will look beautiful in the end. There is a workaround so I can get this logo and this menu when I scroll and I can change this logo when I'm here on top. Let me show you how you can fix that. I go to the back end to Divi theme options. And I change the logo. I click on upload, upload files, select files, image tutorials, number six, FK media. And I search for the white logo. This one, I click on open, set as logo, and I save the changes. So now when I go to the website, it looks perfect. But when I scroll down, it doesn't look perfect. So how can I fix this? Well, I go to 30corp.com. I need to get a CSS code, tutorials, Divi, and it's the upper one different logo on fixed header, copy this, go to the theme customizer Then I scroll down, additional CSS, I paste it here below and now I need to grab my logo. So let me see, I go to divi4.com to the back end media, I search for logo and there it is. I grab the link of this URL. So if I paste it in the address bar, it's this logo. And then at customize, I change the link to this one. So I click on publish. And now when I have the fixed header, it will not link to this logo anymore, but to this one. So let me see, like that. And that's how we can fix it. Well, I really like it, but I do not want to use it for now. So I bring it back, publish, close it, go to the dashboard, to Divi theme options, and then I check the other logo again. save the changes. Now when we go to the website, it is this logo again. So I can bring this back. I go to the theme customizer, to header and navigation, command zero. I go to the primary menu bar and then I say the background color should be white and then fully visible. And then the drop down text color should be 444444, but not only that. Let me see also the text color here, 444444, like that. Publish, close it, and now when I scroll, is exactly the same, which I prefer. What we can do, however, we can go to the header and navigation, and then we have header elements. I can turn on social icons, and I can leave a phone number over here so I can say this is my number and I can say this is my email and then I can go back, save it. Let me close this. And now I have the stop header over here with my phone number, with my email and with my social media icons. So let's configure that theme customizer. I was at the header and navigation, header elements, I turned everything on and I can go to the secondary menu bar and there I can change things if I want to. I can change the letter spacing, I can change the font, let's say a real way or I need to search for it again, that's still a thing I don't like. You should be able to just say R and then find it, otherwise, you know, I'll use that. No, <laughs> never. Sorry, nothing personal, but I don't want to use that. A real way, where are you? A real way. I can use uppercases. I can change the background color. 
I like that. I like it a lot. Click somewhere outside of the area. The text color, it should be white since we use a dark background. And the drop down menu, if we would have a menu, we can select the colors over here. And you can change the menu animation. Okay, we can also make it full width. So if I make my website smaller, it stays totally at the left and at the right. I can do the same thing with my primary menu bar, make it full width. And now if I make the website small or I'm on a big computer screen, everything will be totally at the left and totally at the right. I prefer not to use that. And that's why I decide not to use it and turn it off. So that is what you can do. I want to turn it off. How can you do that? Say, on your keyboard, command shift F7. Just kidding. Go to the header elements, turn off, turn off, remove and remove. Then you see that bar, count to five, press on the X, one, two, three, four, five, and then it will be gone. So, so far, so good. Let's go to the about page and let me show you how I make websites the false way. I click on enable the visual builder. Then I get those options built from scratch. That's what we have done already, kind of. Choose a pre-made layout or clone an existing page. Well, I want to go for a pre-made layout. So I click over here and there are my pre-made layouts. And now I can search for something I would like. So maybe I'm like, hey, I want to go for the about page and see what kind of examples they are. They have, they are, what's that for a word? So I can click over here. It looks professional. Let me show you just for fun. Use this layout. Wait a minute. I will take a sip of water. It looks nice. I can change the text. I can change the images. And it looks quite cool. Totally not in the style of our website. And as I've shown you before, if I don't like it, I can remove it. Yes. And then, and then I can click on the plus again and go to pre-made layouts and search for about again and search and I can continue the search. And maybe there, there was one thing I liked about this area that I could decide to remove everything else except for that one part that I wanted to have. Sometimes it can load a little bit slow, but um, that's no problem for me. I've been waiting for my wife for 27 years and there she was, she was worth the wait. So I guess what you'll see on these images is also worth the wait. What a beautiful comparison. So you can select everything over here, filter everything. I remove it and I see this over here. I'm like, wow, that looks cool. I can scroll down, I can view the live demo or I can use this layout. And that's what I just decided to do. And this time I'm like, wow, that is nice. And what I want to show you now is how I would change this life. If I would do this for a client or for myself, how would I do this? And the only thing I will do differently is that I will talk through the process. So it's not in the style of our website. I say command S right now. So what I want to do, I like it, but uh, I want to change the text and all that stuff. So what I do, I go to the image over here. I go to design, I go to the filter and I bring this to the left and I change it until I think this looks similar to the colors I use in my website or to the style. So let's say 57 degrees. Now I can say right mouse click, copy module styles and every image over here will be transformed to those colors. And if I think, nah, no, it's not, it's not the right filter. Do I go for the pink one? You can also increase the saturation. Okay. Let's try it again. Copy module cells. Paste the module cells. Also here. Yeah, better. I like it. Okay. 
What else? I can say it all. It all started on a dark Saturday. I don't know. On a beautiful, beautiful Saturday. Then I can change the color over here or let me check this, save it. We can even go to a different page now. So let's go to your domain. Edit the home page. Then I want to go to this button. Copy module styles. I go to a different page and here I say, wait, 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 right mouse click, paste the module styles. So you can even go from a different page over here. And that's what I really like. Like that. So let's continue. Okay, from now on, it's going to be about being productive and doing some nice tricks. So I adjusted this button and now I can copy it and I can paste it over here. But what I also can do, right mouse click, look at this, extend button styles throughout this page. So the style of this button will be applied on all the buttons in the website. I like the word button, Benjamin button. See, can we do the same with titles? We can, but there are light titles and dark titles. So yes, I can change the design. Let's take a look at the heading text. Okay, then go to H1, uh, H2, because this is an H2. You can see it. Over here, heading two. So heading text, H2, change the color to this one. Awesome. Now, if I, I can also, by the way, go to design, heading text, and then over here, extend heading text styles. So if I do that to all the text on this page, look at this. Also here, here, but what happens also this area is, is affected by it. So command Z. Bring it all back. So here I can still apply Z, H2, header text, H2. Here I can still apply this. Copy, module styles, but there's also a shortcut. If I hover over here and I see option command V, it is pasted. Probably on the PC control. Alt V, option command V, just by hovering over it. So it makes it also easier. Okay. So what is next? I see these colors over here, those green colors. How can we fix that? Well, let me show you. I go to one of those colors. I go to design, to the line. Look at this, right click. And then I can say find and replace on this page or on the entire website with this color or with this one. Let me do this one. If I say replace, this color changed, but not only this color, look at this. Also over here, over here. But if I scroll down, all those question marks, they did not work. Ah, oh, that's a bummer. That is not nice. So let's try it over here. What do we need to do? Design, go to the icon, find a replace with this color, replace. And now it works. So I don't know, maybe the color was slightly different. So that can save you some time. What we also can do, hold shift, click, hold shift, click. Now I can edit to things at the same time. So if I go to design and I decide I want to go for a nice box shadow, I can select this one until we select it. 
on both areas. Interesting. I can even select a third item. Click over here. So it doesn't matter if it's uh, the same or not the same module. I can just say box shadow, inner shadow, and then over here, this area will have an inner shadow. Okay. I click somewhere else. I click over here again. Design. Box shadow. Remove it. I don't need it. How about the background over here? I click over here. I go to the background, to the gradient, and I change the colors to this one and to this one. Okay. Right mouse click. Copy section styles. Right mouse click. Paste the section styles. Boom. Next dark area. Move around over here, right mouse click, paste the section styles. Design image icon. If there's a color, no, sorry. Let's go to the title text and there it's H4. Change the color. This one again, click over here. Extend title text styles throughout this page. And now the other one is also in color. What I see is that this color is still a little bit different. I can use image U, as you see. Okay. This whole area extend. Image and icon styles throughout the whole page to all the blurbs. And there you go. Then the body text. Make it this one. Extend body tail. Uh, extend. Boom. Then we have this area over here. What is it? An, an image design filter. Copy module styles and then I use option command V again. So let me see. Awesome. Change this color. And then I go to the spacing. I can say minus margin. So I bring it up a little bit. Make the text light, title text, make it white if necessary. Body text is probably body, body text. Yes. Bring this back to nothing so I see normal color. And then here, of course, change the design of the heading text to, if it's H2, to this one. Okay. That's how I would do this. Let me do it one more time and show you a few more tricks you can do. I save this, Command S. Since I used a pre-made layout, it's already optimized for all devices. So I can exit the Visual Builder. This is how it looks. With nice animations. You can change the content. You 
nice effect over here. And that's what I like about the Divi theme. You can work like this, save a lot of time and have a professional clean design. Let's go to the services page, do the same thing, enable the visual builder. Choose a pre-made layout. I scroll down, I search for this area. I click on it a few pages and let me see which one I want to have. I want to have the about page on the service space. So I need to change some text. I use this layout and there it goes. Well, actually it doesn't go. Yes, there it goes. 87, 99, 100, check mark, loading, about us, put. Porter, Imperdiot, Henderet, Suspendisus. I'm reading this. I'm not gone crazy. So a few things I want to do. First, I want to talk about having a video in the background. If I click over here, I can go to the background. Right now, I make use of a gradient and this beautiful area over here. So if I would uh, change this to my colors, you still see this area. So that's nice. You can have things on top of each other. I remove this. I remove this. I want to go for a video. In order to get it, you can go to vdevo.net, hit enter. And I search for nothing. I want to go for motion graphics. So I want to go for a free one. It's premium. So maybe I can filter it. 1080 royalty free. No premium clips, only free clips. Okay, let's see if there's something nice. Okay, it's totally not the style of my website, but I just want to show you what you can do. I can click over here, it is free. I can do a free download. I can use it in all projects and media. I can rename it if I want to. And I can also click over here to add a background video. So I drag it over here, upload the video. There it is. And there it is about us. What about us? Services. Okay. What I can do, I can click over here when I release that, or I can select it. When I release it, I can make it bold. I can make it underlined. I can even give it a different color than the rest. As you see over here, over here, I can do the same when I select something, I can make a quote out of it or out, this, out of this whole area. I can change the font of that word so that you can do it everywhere. So when I select this area, for instance, and I release it, I can make a link clicking here. Go to HTTPS, apple.com forward slash ref, hashtag 0130, 20% off. Okay, that's a fake uh, link, but it becomes the color of our links, which is nice. I can make things bold. I can also say command or control B or select this command I. And in that way I can make things look appealing, bold and a different color. Sorry. Uh, let's go back color. So that's how you can do things. And what I also can do, let me go a little bit lower. Let me go to this area. You can also grab something from YouTube. So I go to YouTube. I'm a fan of the GoPro videos who look a little bit better than the actual footage, but uh, I don't know how that works. Let me see something from GoPro itself. I grab this link, go and see, and then I want to go for a background, remove everything that is not necessary, except for this one. I want to keep that one. And then I click over here, click on the plus, click on insert from URL, paste it. Wow. Insert the post and there it goes. GoPro. Now you see the video in the background. Well, 
doesn't look that good. So what I can do, I can click over here. I can go to design. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Backgrounds. Choose a background color. Let's say this one. But a little bit more transparent. Let's let's make it black and transparent. Okay, then I can click over here. Make the design heading text H2. Make it white. Also the body text. The text is white. So that's how you can use this. What I see, there's no uh, space over here. So I click over here and I go to design, spacing, and then spacing at the inside, which is padding. But this is top and bottom. I want to be from the left and to the right. So I check this. So it will both do the left and the right at the same time. I can also slide it like this. And when I do that, let's say 15 and also here 15. If we have a lighter image now in the video, let me wait for a second. You see there's a little bit space over here. And what I think go here at the row background, it can be darker like that. So, okay. Then I don't need this area. So I remove it. Otherwise, the aspect ratio of the video is a little bit weird. So this is what you can have if you want to. Um, I think a GoPro 8 or 9 Hero video is a little bit absurd because there are a lot of different images and stuff. It's all fast, but I really like the quality of the video. I just wanted to show you what is possible. So what else? There's so much more we can cover. For instance, over here, if I change the color over here, by now you should know we should go to design, go to the heading text, select H2. Then change the color over here. Now, if I think, hey, nice, I want to copy these uh, module styles and I scroll down and I also see them over here, what will happen when we paste the module styles? This text goes to the center and that's not what I want. So, what I also can do over here, click on it, go to design, heading text, H2. I can click over here. I say copy heading text H2 style. So now when I paste it somewhere, I only paste the H2 settings. Right mouse click, paste heading H2 styles. So now this will be changed, but this will remain the same. So that's what you can do. I can also select everything, bring it to the left. Okay. So let me show you what you can do over here. I've shown you before. Shift click, shift click, and shift click. I can adjust everything now. So I say design, I want the image to be rounded. So I can increase this and you see those roundings on all three images. Maybe I'm like, you know what? I want to have 20, but only at the top. So I uncheck this. Here I say zero and here I say zero. So here it looks like that. Okay, I can have a border at the bottom. I can make it five pixels and I can change the color to the border button to this. Then I can go to the text, bring it to the center, I can give the shadow, although I don't like it. So I remove it and I'm happy. So now I've changed three things at the same time. If I want to deselect it, I just need to click outside of this area and now I can click over here change the content. So this is Faith Baker. And I want to change the image. So I click over here, upload files, select files. I go to my desktop. Let me see about us. Faith Baker. I can select them all. Upload. And then I select Faith Baker over here. And then second one, Scroll down image that is Hope Watson. I can also change the text Hope Watson. And then the third one, 
that is. Pearl Nolan. Oh, let's change the text. Pearl Nolan, founder and CEO. Command S. And now everything is saved. I don't like this or I don't need this, so I can remove it. I also don't need this. And now we have adjusted this page to the style of our website. Except for this part, I've talked about this before. I can go to design, filters, make it purple. Then over here, extend filter styles to all images on this page. No, not all images. So I say it's okay. Copy module styles, command, command alt V, V, V. Then the button over here. The background and the text. Only half over it. Perfect. So one more time. Copy module styles. Command option V. So that's the way the cookie crumbles. I'm happy with it. Save it. One more thing, remove this um, quote area. Like that. Okay. Services. Awesome. Let's go to the next page. I exit the visual builder. What we can do, we can create a case studies page where we can showcase what we have a portfolio. If you want to learn how to do that, you can go to 30corp.com. Hit enter. I have a different tutorial about that. Tutorials go to Divi. Then scroll down below the CSS codes. There you see create a portfolio using the Divi theme. It's um, almost 30 minutes. So since it's a big subject, I was like, not everybody wants to have a portfolio or a case study page. So I created a different tutorial about it. I don't want to scare people off with a tutorial that's like five hours long or six hours. So that's why I decided to create a separate tutorial about it. Same goes for the blog. We were just there, 30 corp.com. Hit enter. Tutorials Divi. And then here, create a blog using Divi for almost 50 minutes. So that's uh, so big. Not everybody wants to have those things. So that's why I create separate tutorials about it. The value is still the same. It's still amazing, only in a different tutorial. So if you don't want to have that, you can continue over here. And if you want to have a blog post, you can decide to follow this tutorial. And after that, watch the blog tutorial and the case study tutorial. Or you can do whatever you want to do. I go to the contact page and I want to build it from scratch so you can see how it works. Uh, by now you should be familiar with Divi, but the more I teach it, the more you play around with it, the more familiar you become with it. So I click on enable the visual builder and I want to start from scratch. And I want to start with a nice background image. So I go to Pixabay again.com. And this time I search for New York. I think that's what I also did the latest time. And if you want to get higher quality images, you can go to 30corp.com forward slash I stock photo with enter. And then if you search for New York over here, you will see the images are better. So I'll use this one. For instance, I already have this one as far as I know, so I can download it, confirm, and there it goes. And then again, I go to my finder and I say new New York web design. It's a really big image. So what I can do, I can go to Photoshop and make it smaller, or I can do that within WordPress. So let me show you, let me Exit this, Command S, save it. 
Then I want to go back to the backend to media library, add a new file, select the file, go to my downloads and there it is. So this is the, the free one and this is the paid one. Actually the free one is quite okay. Especially when you enter, you, you uh, add some contrast and stuff. So you can choose whatever you want. I, I already showed you how you can get this one open. But now I want to show you how to make your file smaller and resize it in size and aspect ratio. So it takes a little bit longer because it's a bigger file. My maximum is 256 megabytes. I click over here and I want to click on edit the image and first. I want to make it smaller. So let's see, 9020. Scale it. Okay. Now I want to crop it with an aspect ratio of 16 by 9. And now I can make a selection, but you see the aspect ratio stays the same, 16 by 9. So I drag it all the way to the left and here to the right. Then I can choose which area I want to have the upper area, then I click on crop. And now the image, if I save it, will be 920 pixels by 1080 pixels. And it will only be 439 kilobytes, which is way less than 18 megabytes. Okay. Now I go to the website again, I close this. I close this. I go to the contact page, enable the visual builder, build it from scratch. Click over here. I want to have one row. What do I want to have in that row? Well, let's start with a call to action. Okay. Check this because over here, I want to go to the background at uh, an image. This one optimize and all that stuff. Then I want to go to the gradient at my first color and my second color. Turn this on. I go to, through it a little bit faster because by now you should know how most things work. And um, if you like what you're seeing, please feel free to like this video and subscribe for more upcoming WordPress related tutorials because I'm after subscribers. I would like to have more subscribers. That's for me a big goal. I want to be the best, most subscribers, and that's why I create all those tutorials. And I'm okay with the results. 200. 8,000 subscribers at this moment. And when you watch this, probably more, and you can be part of that team. Woo! So, um, click over here, go to the design layout, and I want to make this. Wait, wait, wait. I want to make this higher. So, let's go to spacing. No. It's spacing, sizing. Max height. Minimum height. Okay. So, I can say the minimum height should be 500. Okay. Then I can click over here. I want to get rid of the background. So I click on the background and I say, bye bye. Then I want to have a title. The title says contact. Then there can be a button. I don't need a button, but there is text. And I want to say over here, get in touch with us. So now I can go to the design, go to the title text. It can be H1, uppercase. It's already uppercase. It's in the center. I want to make it bigger and I want to make it really bold. So let's see. Make it real way heavy. Wow. Then I go to the normal text, the body text. Well, it's already in uppercase. I want to make it bigger. Like that. Okay. Then I see this area, which means this is one row. I want to click on the plus if I can find it. Let me save the changes first. And I cannot find the plus and to click and then I can find it. So I click over here. Then I want to have 
three columns and I want to add my favorite, the blurb again. Blurb. Okay, what's the title of this blurb? How about let's shake hands? Okay, that's the title. Where is it? There it is. Then I can have a text below that. It's the address. I say New York Lane or Street 44. I don't know. I can also say Random Address New York. It's even a generator. Of course, I want to be in Brooklyn or Manhattan. How about Manhattan? Get rid of this one, this bullet. Okay. So, you know the drill with a blurb, we can change it to an icon. And I'm searching for a cup of coffee. There you go. Okay. Then I go to design. I bring this to white. I can have a circle icon. But I'm okay. I'm fine. The text, bring it to the center and make it light. Then I can go to the title text, make it a bit bigger and bolder. And then the normal text, body text, let's make it 18. Okay. Then I go to the background over here and I decided that this should be a little bit less transparent. The second color. like that okay i'm happy now i can duplicate this blurb duplicate and duplicate drag it to the right drag it to the right command s save it and i click over here let's start a project let's create something shift enter amazing together together and then the third one click over here drag this to the left even better come work for us we are searching for new people. Join our amazing, fun, and handsome team. Change the icon to maybe a heart. Yes, contact, get in touch with us. I think this is not perfectly white. Let's check that design body text okay what is next still in the same area i can click here and then i see the plus i create a new area one row i want to go for the contact form i have a complete tutorial about that you can find it over here or in the description and what i want to do about this the name email address and message and then over here you see those colors I don't see them that well. So I want to change those colors here and those over here. So I click on it, go over here, go to design. I search for the button and then I want to use a custom style. Really simple. That color should be white. For this color, we need some CSS. So we go to ferdycorp.com, hit enter. Then we go to tutorials, Divi. Then I scroll down. And I search for contact form, some color. Is it S-U-M? 
S U M. Copy it. I save it, the page. Then I go to the theme customizer. Let's check this area. Go to additional CSS and I paste it over here. Now it's white, so people can reach out to us. I need to have a closing area. Yeah. Awesome. One more thing over here, this icon. Click over here. Go to design. Go to the image icon. Let's search for something. This one. Yes. Come on, S. And then command plus contact, get in touch with us. Let's shake hands, contact form. Let's click on the plus again. Contact. Okay, that's weird. Uh, what I can say. Okay, command minus minus. I can go over here. Go to advanced visibility and disable it on a phone. So command plus. Come on plus, and then you don't see this, but you see, let's shake hands, start a project or come work for us and then it looks fine. Save it. Command minus, come on minus, exit the visual builder, close this, and now we have this. So let's take a look at the whole website. This is what we have created so far. Nice animations. You see that with a blurb, you can create something like this. But also something like this we can add css code and then add that animation we can import pre-made layouts change the style change the content nice animations our latest projects if you have followed the case studies tutorial and our latest blog post if you have followed the blog tutorial we still need to create a footer area that's definitely what we're going to do in this tutorial so the about page import the pre-made layout change the text Change the colors. Same goes for the service page. We played around with videos in the background over here. How to style the text, how to have a video in the background. And we learn a lot of things about becoming faster in making websites with a lot of nice tricks. Here's the case study page. We can filter it based on what we offer. Here's the blog page. It looks quite normal, but we're going to change this using Divi 4.0 template builders and then the contact page. So what I want to do now, I want to show you a few different things. Let's go to the home page. There are so much more things we can cover in this tutorial, but I think it's okay right now. You can figure everything out for yourself and uh, that was it. Thank you. No, just kidding. It's not um, the end of the tutorial. There are so much more things we can cover. We can talk about split testing about uh, the theme builder. We can create custom headers, custom footers. We can create custom templates for our portfolio, for a blog page, for a WooCommerce page. We can integrate our whole website with uh, WooCommerce. We can make use of external plugins because Divi is so successful, successful, successful that other people want to build upon the success by adding plugins that will make the Divi theme even better. So we're going to talk about those things. Um, maybe it's a good moment to ask you to like this video if you like the video. And if you want to subscribe for more upcoming WordPress related tutorials, you can do so. Click on the bell icon and you'll be the first with many others <laughs> who see it when I have a new video. I try to upload a video every week at least. And me, meanwhile, I try to enjoy the process and I do. I love making those videos. And if you like watching them, if you subscribe, then you can watch more videos and learn more things have a more successful business, serve more people, make more money, do good things with the money. And in the end, everybody is happy. I hope you are still happy today, whatever you're doing, probably right now watching this tutorial. I'm talking too much. Let's continue with the next step. Let's talk about split testing. Split testing is amazing because if you have two websites and one person goes to this website and the other one goes to this one, this one is converting better. People are clicking more on the buttons you want them to click, then you know you don't need to use this layout anymore. So you don't have to split test anymore. And with split testing, you can decide, decide or you can see 
what is working better. So let's go to the computer screen again. I enable the visual builder. What I can do now, I can click over here or over here and click on split test. And this is amazing. I can now select a goal. What do I want people to do? I want people to click on learn more. So I click on that and now my split that is ready to go. So what I need to do over here, I see a few arrows. I can now say, let us tell your story or I can click here on the right. And then I say, learn more about us. And if I save it, it is saved. So now it says, learn more about us. And here at the left, it says, let us tell your story. And the goal is for people to click over here. So if I click here, it says statistics are being collected and we can take a look at reads, bounces. So the bounce is that people leave the website without clicking on one button or link. And then here's the goal engagement. And in that way, you can see what your visitors are doing and you can optimize your website so you get more sales or more people that want to make use of your services. Because when your website is ready, it's all about split testing, optimizing your website to make it better, to offer your services in a better way. So what I found out is that not all the colors in my backgrounds were the same. So I did it over here, but I want to implement it in the whole website because if I go to the portfolio page, to the council Maslaus, this is totally different. I don't know why I chose this color. So how can I fix this? I go to the home page. I enable the visual builder. And it's not only that I have different background colors. If I click over here at background, it's not that I only use those colors, but also here there are some settings, the starting position, the ending position. So I want to duplicate this whole area. So here at background, I say right mouse click copy background, I save it, then I exit the visual builder, I go to the blog page for instance, and here I see this orange area, I click on enable the visual builder, I hover over the section, right mouse click, paste the background, awesome, command S, exit, go to portfolio, now how I work, maybe there's a better way, but I hold command, I click on all those items. Then I say control tab, enable the visual builder, control tab, enable, control tab. It slows down your computer a bit. Control tab twice. And now right mouse click paste the background, control tab, right mouse click, paste background, right mouse click, paste the background. Close it, command W. Now when I go to a portfolio item, the colors are the correct colors. What you also can do, I, I see still more IDs that I can show you. For instance, I enable the visual builder and I want to create a call to action. So here below, I click on the plus. Regular, one area with a call to action. And I think this is perfect. I want to have a title or a link, I mean. Hashtag like that. So what I can do now, I can save this as a global item. So if I save it over here, I can give this a name, call to action, complete website, save as a global item. And I don't need a category or I create a new category, call to actions. I save it to the library. I save the page. You see that the colors change. And now when I exit the visual builder and I go to the contact page, I scroll down. I enable the visual builder. I click on the plus, add from the library. 
and there's a global green area call to action complete website. So I save it, but now if I go to the module settings, the background, and I change it to a gradient, so I can remove this, I go to gradient plus the first color and the second color, then I change it to 90 degrees, 2% and 70. I think I like this or maybe I want to change the title. Get the Divi theme. Okay. If I save it, I exit the Visual Builder, save and exit. And I go to the home page and I scroll all the way down. We see that this has the same style. How come? Because we use a global item and everywhere in the website you place that global item. It doesn't matter where you change it, it will be changed on all the places where you use this global item and that helps you to speed up your workflow. So what I could have done was go to portfolio to a certain project and change this into a global item. So if I wanted to change it everywhere, I could change it only here and then everywhere in the website it will be changed. So that's what you can do. Now let's take things to the next level. So if you take a look at your homepage, you see a header, then you see the page and below you see the footer. We have not taken a look at the footer yet, but a website contains three parts. The header with the menu, the page and then the footer. And if I go to a different page, to the about page for instance, I still see this header, a different page and the same footer. If I go to the blog page, I see the same header, I see blog posts and I see the footer. If I go to a certain blog post, I see this layout, the title, some meta information, the featured image and then the blog post itself. If I go to a page that does not exist, you see this, no results found. This looks ugly. What you can do with the theme builder of Divi, you can completely redesign the layout of every page. On every page you can have a different header, a different footer, a different 404 page, you can have a different search results page. The sky is the limit. And let me show you how that works. We go to the back end, to the dashboard, to Divi, and then to the theme builder. And if I take a look at the website, as you know we have configured the header with our logo here and our menu, we change the size, we change this color, but we're actually a bit limited when it comes to creating a header. And what you can do now, you can use the Divi Builder to create a header and that is amazing because that gives you so much more freedom to create the header you have in mind or the footer you have in mind or the blog page or the 404 page. So I go to the theme builder and what I want to do, I want to click on global header. I click on that and I can build a global header from scratch. What does it mean a global header? It means that the header will be shown on all the pages. So this header will be replaced with what we are going to build over here. But what I prefer is that we import it from a pre-made layout. I've shown you already how to create things in Divi. So now I want to focus on the functionalities of the Divi theme builder instead of designing something from scratch. So if you want to import a pre-made layout like a header or a footer, you can go to ferdicorp.com. Then we go to tutorials, Divi, I scroll down and then here we see Divi 4 layout packs. If I click on that, you need to be logged in into your member area. So I need to log in over here and then I hope it's still there. Uh, it's a Cyber Monday, so I don't know how long this will be there, but if the link changes, I will change the link also. And then we have landing page layout pack, theme builder templates. And then here we have header and footer layout pack. So I can download this pack or I can preview the layout pack. And then what you'll see is how you can import layouts like these. So the logo is in the middle, the menu below and here at the right there is a button. Normally that is not possible like that. So here theme builder packs, we can view the demos, product layouts and what we can do, sorry I need to click over here again, we can download them over here. So download the pack or I made something myself, the Divi 4 header and footer pack. So I'm downloading this, it says it's dangerous, it is not, so I click on keep. Then I want to unzip it, there it is, JSON file. So what I do, I go to the theme builder, I go to the Divi library, 
I click on import and export and I want to import something. I choose a file and it is the JSON file over here. I open it and I click on import Divi Builders Layouts. So what I do now, I import a footer and a header. That's what I want to use. So there they are, Divi header and Divi footer. What I can do now, I can go to the theme builder over here at Divi theme builder. And I want to add a global header. So this header will be shown on the complete website. I click on that, add from the library. And then I can go to my saved layouts. And here's the Divi header. I click on it. And when I save the changes, watch what happens. When I refresh the page, the header will be replaced with this one. This is what I've made. You can adjust it. So if you want to adjust it, you can click over here. And just as Divi works, you can change the image over here. You can change the background over here. You can change the text. Change this text. You can change the links over here. You can change the size. So if you want to make this bigger, I go to design menu text. I can change the color of the menu over here. If I don't want that, I say command Z. So you can adjust it to your wishes and then it will be shown on every page. So if I go to the blog page, it will also be shown over here. And as you see, there's so much information than the standard Divi header. And if I go to the footer, it's still the same. Why? Because here at the theme builder, let me close this, save and exit. There is no global item yet. So I click on global footer, add one, add from the library, my saved layouts, and then I go for the Divi footer. The changes are saved. Now if I refresh the page, I scroll down, there is a footer. People can call us, book an appointment. It's not totally aligned perfectly. We have the address, the hours we are open. People can subscribe to our email list and then they can go to our Facebook pages. What I also can do, first let me go to a different page, to the home page for instance. I click on the logo. I scroll down all the way. And there it is also what I can do. I can go to the theme builder. I can click over here on the global footer. Then I can edit it. And what I can do, I can remove a complete section over here. I don't need that. Command S or Control S on the PC. And when it is saved, I close it and I say save again. And now when I refresh the page, we have our footer over here on every page. So, so far so good. What we have now is a more advanced header and an advanced footer. But what we can do now, if you take a look over here, we have the page services with photography, film and web design. If I go to photography, we see the header, we see the footer. What we can do now, I can say, you know what, for photography, I want to have a totally different layout than for all the other pages. So what I can do now, I can go over here to the theme builder. I click on the plus and I can say, I want to assign this template that I'm going to make. So I hover over a specific page and I search for the page photography. There it is. Okay. I create the template. So what it's doing, it's copying the global header. So if I save it and I refresh the page photography, everything is still the same. But if I say, you know what, over here, I want to disable the global item and I want to click over here to create a new header. But this time I click over here and I change the background from purple to greenish. The second part, bluish, like that. Now I save it. Uh, first, I can also go over here, go to design, button, and then I say also a little bit greenish or bluish. Let me see. Yeah, I like that. I save it, then I close it over here, save it, command S, and now when I refresh the page, it is this color. But if I go to the home page, it is the purple header again. So what have I done? 
One more time, I go to photography. I said on the whole website, the global header should have this, should have this purple header and this footer over here. But I want to create a template with a custom header that is different. And then over here, I want to assign it to a specific page. So if I say I want to add this to all blog posts and I save it, command S. Now when I go to the home page, it is purple. But if I go to a certain blog post, this is also purple. But if I go to a blog post, this one, now it should be green. Wow, look at that. So what does it mean? It gives you so much freedom. Before, a few years ago, I had my own website with photography, web design and film. And I wanted every page to have a different color scheme. So I want photography to be yellow, web design to be orange and film to be blue. But then I need to fix a lot of things in CSS and PHP and custom post types. And oh man, it was so hard to do it. Finally, it worked. But right now it's so easy to do. So what you also can do, if you have a shop page, you can say for a shop page, I want to have a different layout. I want to have a shop icon over here or the total amount you have to pay when people buy things in your shop. So you can adjust everything for every page. But we're not there yet. There's so much more to show. So if I take a look at this blog post, as a man thinks in his heart, this is the blog post we have created. But what I want to do, I want to create a totally different look and feel for the blog posts. So I go to the theme builder. I click on the plus. Before I do that, I click over here because I want to uncheck this, save it. So now it's only shown on the photography page. So I create a new template and this time I say it's for all the posts. Create a template. So it uses the global header, which is the purple one. So now if I save it and I refresh the page, this purple one again, but now I click on the custom body. As I said before, we have the header, the page and the footer. So we have the global header and the global footer. We have nothing in the body yet. So right now I want to change the look and feel of this area of the body. So I click on custom body and I can build a custom one or I can add one from the library. We can uh, download things over here. So let me see uh, for WooCommerce, for instance, if I scroll up. Theme Builder, I can preview this in a new tab. But what I want to do, I want to search over here at pre-made layouts. Then I can search for blog. Then we see, look at this for instance. That's for an overview blog page. So we'll take a look at that later. Right now I want to go to a blog post. So I go to search for post. Now we see a lot of different styles. So I like this one, for instance, or this one. Yeah, I, li I like so much of those posts, but I think this one is a little bit more advanced. So I can import this one. I can say, use this layout. And what does it mean? It becomes the body, the layout of every blog post in the website. So custom body, I save it. So I've not changed anything, but if I refresh the page, look at this. Our featured image is displayed here in the back end. There's a certain layout. Here's the title, the amount of comments. And there's all this stuff. And then let me see, where is it? The only thing I'm missing is the actual blog post. So let me configure this. I click over here so I can edit it. And I like it. The featured image is displayed over here. By who is it written? We can change the look and feel of that. Here is the title and it uses dynamic post. If I click over here, it shows the post archive title. So this is a post title as a man thinks in his heart, for instance, and it will be displayed over here because we fetch it using dynamic content. So if I remove this, I can fetch it by clicking on this icon use dynamic content and then I can say I want to display the title or the site title or the post excerpt or the post title. So if I would say post link, and I say, okay, okay, I save it. Right now it will look a little bit weird. If I refresh this, it will be shown as a link. So I prefer not to have that. But if I click over here, 
can also remove it again. Post tags. I don't know if this blog post has tags, but I save it. Refresh. Yeah, Bible, Proverbs, Solomon, self-improvement. So what we can do, we can fetch a lot of information using dynamic content, and then we can style it to our wishes. So I bring it back, of course, to uh, the page title. Use dynamic content. Page title. And then we can change the look and feel. Well, I like it the way it is, but over here, I click over here, and you see the body text, it's fetching the post comment count. But we can also design it. So I can say, uh, you know what, the text. I want to be capitals and the text, text color, I leave it as this. So then here, we have this area, I can say I want the image to be bigger. So I go to design, image icon, change the round corners if I want to, place it at the top like that. Then let me see. Spacing. Let me see over here. I can use an icon instead. I can change all this. Then I can go to the text. It's in the center. I want it to be a bit smaller. So I go to title text. And then there I can make it smaller, bring it to the center. I can remove the text written by. So I can say, uh, go to text, post author, and the before text. I can remove it so you only see the author. Then you see the date below, and then you can change the date format. We can change the colors, of course, over here. Background, we can remove it, okay. Command S to save it. And now when we refresh this, it looks like that. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And of course, we can change those colors. One important thing we need to do, I want to remove this area. Yeah, I don't like this. Remove this, this, and this. Related articles, I like that. What I want to do over here, really important, row, and then I search for content, post content. Otherwise we do not see the blog post. I think that's okay. I like it the way I save it. Now when I refresh this page, it looks like this. And then the related articles. And then we can remove also all this stuff. What you can do, remove this. You can say, I want to have a certain area below every blog post where people can subscribe. Well, then you can import it over here. What I prefer, I click over here. I go from something from the library and I say call to action complete. And there it is. When I change it over here, it will be changed in the whole website. So under every blog post now, there's an advertisement for the Divi theme. So I close this. I refresh the page. And this looks now totally different than what we had before. We had the theme builder. And then here below, get a Divi theme. And of course the footer over here. And again, as I showed you, if we go to photography, it is different. So what we can do, we can also say, let me show you, <laughs> click on the plus, say uh, all posts or a certain category. So if I say uh, self-improvement, Okay, create a template. Then I click on add a custom body, add from the library, pre-made. So I search for posts or post. And if I grab a different one, let me see. This one, for instance, post page. Use this layout. I save it. So all the blog posts that are under self-improvement do have a different layout now. So if I go to the blog page and I know for instance this, that the amazing Divi theme is not about self-improvement. So we have this layout. But if I go to the blog page and I go to this one, which is self-improvement, then it has a different look and feel. It's totally different. So in that way you can change 
every aspect of your website. Let me show you more. If I go to a page that does not exist, it says really boring, no results found. So what do, do we do? We create a new template and then I search for 404, for instance, 404 page, create a template. I want to uh, start from scratch, build a custom body, build from scratch, a row, and then I can say text 404. Go, you know what? I leave it at that, 404. I make this a heading two. I go to design, heading text H2, make it so big. Okay, then I say plus button, I close it, but I don't want to show the header and footer. So if I go to this page, I cannot find it. You see the header, you see the footer. I want to remove that, remove that, save it, refresh, and now we see this page and we can go back to the home page. So it gives you much more creativity to create a website you have in mind. But wait, there's more. If you go to the blog page, it still looks like this. Well, since we use a theme builder, I can click on the plus, say for the blog, I can go for a specific page, the blog page, or over here the blog, create the template, add, add from library, pre-made layouts, I search for a blog. I can scroll down and if I see something I like, I can import it. So I like this one, simple blog page, use this layout, save the changes. And now if I refresh this, it looks like this. Simple layout, I can remove this area, so over here, can click here, remove this area, save it, close it. Now if I refresh the page, this is the overview of our blog page. And in that way, you can import a layout for everything. Also for the portfolio page, if you want to, the sky is the limit. Let me show you how it works with WooCommerce, if you have WooCommerce. So what I've done, I added a web shop. So if I refresh the page, you see shop, I click over here, and this is the standard layout of the WooCommerce shop. So how can we create something beautiful out of this? <laughs> it looks a little bit weird like this. How can we fix this? I go to the Divi theme builder. And I want to add a new template, but first I go to create a WordPress website for the corp and then to Divi. I scroll down and I click on Divi for layout pack. Or packs. I scroll down and here's the WooCommerce product layout pack. I download it, so there it goes. Then I can take a look at the layouts. I search for WooCommerce. So this is what we can create. So if I go to the website and I go to a certain product, I have by the way a tutorial about this. If you search for YouTube and you search for WooCommerce tutorial, you'll find mine here or maybe below, but there I'll show you step-by-step step how to create a beautiful web shop. So this is the normal layout. How can we make this better? Well, I downloaded a few things. There they are. I can go to the theme builder, then I go to the Divi library. I click on import, import, choose a file at downloads, product page. I just grab one. If I want to, I can take a look over here. For instance, services one, how does it look? Service one. Furniture that looks like that. And maybe I think I like furniture. So I go back, choose a file and I go for furniture, open it. And again, this is made by professionals. I am totally not a professional designer. I see myself as a professional teacher, but not a designer. I don't know. Maybe I can develop it, but I don't have it yet. But I 
make use of pre-made templates that professional designers made. So in that way, I'm, I still can make beautiful websites and you can too. So there it is. I go to the theme builder. I click on plus for the WooCommerce website. So I scroll down and I say for all products, create a template, custom body, add from library, your saved layouts. I'm going quicker because by now you should get how it works. Uh, Divi product furniture. So what happens now, the same information, I save it, that you have over here will now be displayed a different way. So we have the image, you have the title, the price, the text, add to cart, the category, the description, reviews, related products. And if I refresh this, and now it looks like this. The image with a nice thing here, the title, the text about it. So it looks so much better, related products. And in that way, again, you can save time. You can make it in a way that looks like your website. So uh, it doesn't have a different style like it has right now. So for instance, I can go over here, click to customize it. Then I can go to the shadow, I guess. Let me see. The first column, background. Yeah, I like that, but I prefer a gradient. And then again, 90 degrees. Starting position two, then 70. So change the color. So let me go to the design the button, of course, text, and then the background. Here it is. I can make it a gradient. Save it. Okay, I close it. Refresh. Awesome. But if I go to the shop page, it still looks ugly. So how can we fix that? Let me see, I can go to the plus and then I say on the shop page, WooCommerce pages, shop, create a template. Add a custom body, add from library, and then I search for shop, or I select it over here, online store. And then I can grab something like this. I can grab one, for instance, this one, use this layout, and then of course I need to change a lot of things, but it is so much better than this. Just an overview, no, you want to give people the feeling that they are going to buy something really beautiful. And if it looks like this, you know, oh, it's a WooCommerce store. It doesn't look that appealing, but you can make it appealing by using pre-made layouts from Divi. Command S, refresh, and there it is. And as I said, you need to change this and you can link this all to different articles, change the images. But here are the new arrivals. Categories, tools, furniture, paint, garden. So that's totally different than we had. And then, of course, you can adjust it. So that's what you can do with the theme builder. Now let's go to the home page. So what you can do if you want to, you can make this sticky. So when you scroll down, the header scrolls with you. If you want to know how to do that, then click over here. And I want to show you something else. If you go to ferdicorp.com forward slash divi. You go to your account, let me see, I log in. And then over here at product downloads, we see the Divi theme, the Divi builder, we use them both. But here below, we have the extra theme if you want to create a magazine. Here you can see an overview of the extra theme. And then you can create websites like these, magazines with a lot of news items. It looks beautiful. I will make a tutorial about that. You can find it over here. If I go back, there's also the Bloom plugin that will help you to get more email opt-ins. I have a tutorial about it. You can find it over here. And then we have Monarch and Monarch will help you to let people follow you and let people share things on your website. Those tools are amazing. I have tutorials about them. You can find them over here or in the description and I will show you really quick 
how it will look on your website. So at this moment, I'm showing some videos on how it will look. This is the Bloom plugin. So when people enter a certain page on your website, you can decide that you want to show the pop-up or the fly-in. You can give people more access to information on your website when they opt in and leave their email address. There are so many possibilities. And with Monarch, you can say, hey, share this page or follow me. Or you can say, this is the amount of followers I have. And you can link those statistics with your YouTube account, Facebook, Instagram, and you can choose how you want to display this. There are a lot of companies building on the success of Divi and they create extra plugins and tools that will make Divi even better. So let's talk about a few of those on where you can take a look in order to take your projects to the next level. So the first external tool for Divi would be 30corp.com forward slash Divi live. Hit enter. And what it does, you have tutorials, you have child themes and plugins, and I'm especially interested in the plugins. So we can shop over here. I want to go for Divi plugins, Divi plugins and extensions. And what I personally like is the Divi mega menu. And if you want to take a look at it, you can learn more over here. See an example. So when I hover over here, you see how it looks. Contact us, login demo, nice animations. You can watch the promo video. What I also like is the Divi hacks, which adds a lot of functionalities to your website. You can see the demo over here. Or watch the video, that's what I prefer. I like watching videos, that's also why I create those videos. Right now it's not there. But what you can do, uh, let me see the Divi Live All Access Membership is here. Click on learn more. You can have all those plugins and all the products on this website. You can watch the video over here and explains what it is. And you can join the membership for 349 for a lifetime membership. So you pay this one time and you have access to everything. Also uh, new things that will be added in the future or 150 or 149 per year. And as I said before, I like the Divi Mega menu, Divi Hacks, but those also have nice additions. And as you see, they are adding new things. So that's Divi Live. The second one, 30corp.com forward slash Divi Express to SS. Hit enter. It will be redirected to Divi.express. What I like over here is the pre-made websites. So new WordPress Divi layouts. You can have access to all those layouts. And also here is a special deal. I wonder if it's really the case or if they always say that. Just six hours and then for 159 for lifetime access, you can have more than thousand Divi selections on the 30 Divi elements, extra sub pages, layouts, and unlimited downloads. And every month there are 100 new products. So not only pre-made layouts, but also extra elements or also known as modules. So if we go to layouts, I can go for e-commerce for instance. You see all those nice layouts. They are created for us. They're optimized for us. And we need to change the images and the text or the content. And then you get access to those. Well, the third one is 30 corp.com forward slash Divi space. Hit enter. We can see all the products over here and there are a lot of products. There's a lot they offer over here. As you see, 91 items. And also here they offer lifetime membership. But first, let me show you if we go to plugins. What I really like here is the Divi rocket. It will make your Divi website a lot faster and this is specially made for Divi. So it's, it's optimizing your website like crazy and Divi switch. Divi switch is like a Divi on steroids. You can read more over here. Watch this video. It will add a lot of functionalities to your website. As I said before, you can watch this video and there are also great tutorials about all those tools and you can choose over here what kind of license you would like to have. 
So, wow. If you have made it to this point, I want to congratulate you. First, for watching the whole video. Second, for uh, persevering in watching everything. And maybe you already applied a few things or you applied everything. Whatever the case is, I hope you will be really successful with your website. Good luck with what you're doing. And the great thing is that with the Divi theme, you can make unlimited websites. Also with the different tools, with Bloom, with Monarch, with the extra thing. So you can even decide to become a web designer. You can learn everything over here. You can learn extra things on YouTube and start making websites for clients and make money with it. I've heard it from a lot of people already. It's up to you if you want to do that. Uh, as I said before, there are more tutorials about, about Bloom, about Monarch, about the extra theme, about uh, how to optimize your website for the search engine results SEO. You can watch those tutorials over here. You can subscribe over here. Let me see over here. And then I hope you have a great day. Good luck with your website. Good luck with everything you are doing. And we'll see each other in another video, probably, or not. Whatever. Bye-bye.